You are about to witness history in the making. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Pop Culture Gamers podcast. Tonight, you got me in the chit chat with um, Hayden as usual. Hey, Steve. How are we doing? Not too bad. And we missed it last week, didn't we? We were. We did. We did. And I wish we freaking didn't. But there you go. I'll I'll tell you about that in a minute, and you know about that. Well, go on, tell everybody of what you've done because we didn't record. He was so unhappy about not recording. Yeah, this because is the story of war. Because if I if we hadn't recorded, I wouldn't have had this KFC gravy jump out of the pot from the microwave after three minutes, attach it to the side of my hand, and I, you could probably hear me from John O'Groats as I was screaming in agony. And freaking it, did it hurt? I had my hand in ice water for God knows how long. Um, but by the time I went to bed, I, I just I was able to just be able to not think about it with the with the heat. So when, when it's cold, it's OK. And then when your hand warms up, that pain just starts to jab you in the side and freaking yeah. did it hurt. And if we had done the podcast, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> True. But there you go. I can't. I'm not going to complain. Although then again, you might have had the KFC earlier and then that still spurted out onto your hand. And then you'd have been in pain doing the podcast. Oh, uh, the podcast wouldn't have been <laughs> probably. <laughs> no. But it's as I showed you, I showed you on, on here, it is freaking awful really is but um yeah so other than that i mean as we start with what you've been i've got a few bits to talk about after this but um what you've been up to mate as we've had a two two week break uh i think it's actually a three week technically but um i sold my house Mm -hmm. that had for sale finally uh it went um very nice to see my bank balance with uh lots and lots of zeros on it um, not that that lasted long because, uh, well, basically we've bought a bungalow now, uh, which is still being built. I was going to say, bought a bungalow which I'm waiting to be built, but is it land with a bungalow ready to go on it? I just did, I was a bit confused by that. <laughs> well, uh, it, the bungalow is in existence. It's just been plastered on the inside. Mm. So it's uh, it's a new development outside of North Allerton right. uh, that I'm uh, look into and that's going to be sort of like my nest egg retirement fund sort of <clears throat> income generation sort right, of right i came with you yeah um just like my other house was but i never heard any money out of that one uh, because just one thing after another but this is a new build so it's got 10 years warranty going uh with the house if there's any problems and hopefully should be that we don't have many costs <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, other than the normal sort of stuff yeah uh so we've uh my wife and i have uh been using the furniture that she brought from uh you know uh, where she lived before for the whole time we've been married the last 18 years so we've redone our bedroom <laughs> uh which was quite costly uh but yeah so we've got all of that sort of stuff uh on order which will be delivered in the next uh couple of months mm-hmm. uh my den uh, currently is carpeted uh, on the, uh, you know, on the sort of like computer area sort of type, which mm. is a real pain in the backside when you're in a, a gaming chair because you have to sort of like really push to move the chair and stuff like that. So I'm getting a new flooring in here, <coughs> mm-hmm. uh, which is being in- installed tomorrow, actually. Oh, right. OK. So it might be very echoey the next time that we talk. I don't know. You have to put some carpet down. Or a rug or something. Something to, uh, to just take up some of that sound, I think. Um, other than that, done quite a lot of videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Started to uh, develop some of the Achievement Hunter sort of uh, videos as well. And I also picked up an Oculus Quest 2. Okay. Is that the latest version, is it? Yeah. Yeah, the latest version. Or I should say, yeah, it's a meta Oculus Quest now mm-hmm. because it's not Facebook anymore, but 
and that's that's it really that's been my uh, few weeks okay well mine's not so great um because my freaking hand but i i didn't realize i was looking at my i don't know about you so you've got sky yeah yeah I've just renegotiated my contract today, actually. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have this chat then, because I did mine last weekend, and I, I, I originally got it down to a figure, and yeah. then I noticed it's now starting to jump up every month. Yeah. It was 108 this month. It was going to go up to 136 by about another two months. I thought, okay, I better make a phone call. And um, normally I get some Scottish lass from up north, but this was a, a guy <clears throat> from a different... Um, different uh, should we say he wasn't from Scotland? Mm. I could just about understand him, bless him, but it is what it is. But anyway, so I explained about what what I was going to be paying. He said, "Yes, it's um, yes, your contract is going to be now 114 pounds." And I said, "I ain't paying it." I said, "I can't afford to." I said, "I, had to, I said I've got I've got broadband and I got the um, phone over the uh, IP VoIP or whatever you call it. Um, it doesn't work, so I want that taken off anyway. But I think that's a freebie." So he said, well, 114, yeah? I said, no, I can't do it. I, honestly, I said, I've had it down to about 80 quid last time, and I was quite happy with that, with the um, with my internet and, and Sky, with what I needed. Well, can you go 100 then? I'm thinking, this guy is doing my head in. Why isn't he being a bit more constructive in how he's going about this? Mm. So I, I said, no. I said, well, we'll have to start, I'll have to start taking stuff off of it because I'm, I'm not going to do it. You know, I've been with you for seven years now on the trot i'm not gonna you know kind of this anyway so a lot of, this is like i was thinking i was like in the life of brian trying to do a haggle yeah <laughs> that's what it felt like with this guy anyway i got it to 88 quid for all of sky and my broadband mm. which i think isn't bad i don't know what did you get yours down to <laughs> or, what, or what have you got in that within that um what you've, you've got you know right well i mean i don't take as many products with sky as you do Oh, that's Netflix as well, including that as well. Yeah, well, what I've done, because um, I used to get my Netflix through Apple because it was cheap, apart from I noticed it had gone up to about a tenner a month. Mm. Uh, and that's just for the HD. Yeah. So uh, I cancelled that, binned that. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I've done is I've knocked off the kids' TV, which I'm not even sure whether or not we got it for free or not. Because you know, that's all I took off. That's all I didn't want due to just the two of us the only thing i don't yeah. use is kids tv well my son doesn't watch kids tv anymore you know mm. he hasn't watched it for a year so far been it um we currently have movies but i've taken them off mm-hmm. just because last night i think was the first time in ages that we've watched a movie on sky rather than watch it on netflix my wife after took it off was oh well i wish i hadn't really taken it off now she was the one who told me to take it off <laughs> did you um because i know what was on this week it was old wasn't it which i spoke that's what we watched yeah 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 um so i've added netflix on yeah um and then i've got that free for five months mm. and then it goes up to six pounds a month yeah i'm paying six pounds where i was originally paying you see i was paying the way it worked was i was paying netflix through netflix yeah um, i was paying probably 8.99 or something like that yeah so all i did was went to sky and it just got transferred over i didn't disconnect from netflix yeah it, the account just moved into sky and for the cheap price yeah well i've got all of the uh, well hopefully have all of the uh, details of that coming yeah and then um what else have i got I've got the standard sort of Sky channels, mm. and I've got uh, Sky HD and Ultra HD, so that mm. it gives us the four screens to watch. Uh, yeah, because I use my phone for the as a second screen, if you're with me. Yeah, I mean, you can have it installed on as many as you want, but the, no more than two people can watch Netflix at any given time if on the normal Netflix, but you can get the, you know, the uh, Ultra HD yeah, I've got on Netflix. Well, yeah. yeah, so we've got got that now because before we've always had sky i uh, say uh, netflix hd rather than ultra hd mm. so that's going to be uh, a nice change i think um so, but we've got that for uh is it 34 pounds for the first five months and then that goes up to 44 mm. uh i was paying 50 mm. uh but i did have I, I didn't have netflix on you know that Netflix was another tenner on top. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. 
and then I had Sky Movies. So the so effectively, I've lost Sky Movies, and I've gained ultra high def. Yeah. Um, so and that's and so in reality, what I was paying with Netflix, I've saved about sixteen quid, which is about the cost of Sky Movies. So I haven't really saved, saved, but yeah, yeah. So I yeah, so I've got everything Sky can offer. Yeah. With my broadband. Right. I'm not, I'm not even sure if I've got kids. I don't even. I wouldn't even try anyway. So it doesn't really matter on that. Um, but for eighty-eight quid with my, you know, with my Sky um, Sky broadband that I've got, I think it's fair enough. Yeah. And Netflix as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you're a Sky, if you've got Sky Movies, um, uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming is for free at the moment until about the twenty-seventh of March. So you can just download it. It's free charge in in store. Actually, yeah. you can still do that. Because you can you, still do it because you're, it's a VIP reward. It's not a. Yeah. Yeah, but what I'm saying, even though you don't have Sky Movies, I think you can use it in your. If you can go to the Sky Store still. Yeah, you can. You can. It's not that you need it because you've got the 4K version anyway. But yeah, it's nice to just tag it and. Oh, I've, I've had it. I've had mm. it because it's you know you can, why not? <laughs> why not exactly? <laughs> I think I've got about five movies now sitting there like that. I've got Sky, um, Star Trek, and uh, The Exorcist, and Rabbit, and what else have I got in there? Oh, a kids movie. That I just. It was for free, so I just did it. And they used to come with a blue, uh, a DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah, they did. The yeah, not anymore though. No, no. Uh, so, but yeah, I was. It was a bit miffed how they were, how they were operating with it, but I, at least I got it down to a fairly bit. This one caveat to this, I got to pay twenty pound admin fee. See, I didn't have to pay that. So how does that work then? Do you know what I mean? No, he said, idea. Oh, and he said that's pro rata, so I'm all right. So next month's still going to be a bit higher because I'm paying this twenty pound. Yeah. And then it'd be after that it would be 88, I presume, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't add, I was I don't know if it's worth adding Prime or not to it, because you pay that normally with Amazon. But how does that work if you're adding Prime to it? But then you you pay Sky instead of you pay Amazon. Right. The same way you're not paying Netflix, you're paying Sky for Netflix. Yeah. It's a piggyback scenario, I think. That's all it is. Okay. But, um, yeah, so that was, uh, at least I got that out of the way, and that's now... That's now for the next God knows how many, you know, my contract. Yeah. It's not going to go up in any price until the contract runs out. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, mine will go up by eight or nine pounds in five months' time. But I can take Netflix and uh, the Sky Ultra HD off Mm. at that point because they're not fixed. It's only the (laughs) channel that's fixed for 18 months. And then I can renegotiate the cost of those. But you can always try. I mean, even though you're within contract and and you've got some deals going, they keep asking me to to what about my phone? You know, I said, well, no, I'm with O2. I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm not 100% sure about that. Yeah. So my package then is Sky HD and Ultra HD. Mm. Complete sports, sports, Sky Cinema, Sky Signature, whatever that is now, which is what Sky Signature is the normal channels. Um. Yeah. That's it. That's what I've got. Yeah, and that, that should include F1 as well. It does. Yeah, complete sports that's in there, yeah. and, and and sports HD. Mm. Uh, yeah, because it says below that one month of free Sky Kids for just a fiver. No, thank you. I don't need it. Mm. I don't need to be watching that stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm quite chuffed about that. When I was paying with Virgin on top of that, that was a bit pricey. <clears throat> mm. But uh, I didn't know. Whether or not it was worth upgrading my TV for Sky Glass or not, I'm not sure what TVs they are, so I didn't go into that. I didn't go into that. Sky Glass doesn't use a box; it uses. I know that. Yeah. It's built in, but what I mean, I didn't know if the TV was any good. If you with me, what they are in size? I don't know what size they are, but to be honest, I don't like the idea of Sky Glass. Because you're renting, basically, you're renting that TV, aren't you? You are, yeah. And I think you have to give it back when you put your. Um... That's what I'm imagining you do, anyway. I, I might, I might be completely wrong, but. Well, normally you, they allow you to keep the kit, don't they? Um, I think so. I did have a little issue, though, because I have got a second box here, which I've not set up. Right. They wanted me to send it back, and I'm saying, well, no, I paid for it. I actually bought the thing. It shouldn't actually be there. It's my, you know, if I'd said it, I'd be, I'd have Sky in here. Yeah. Tagging off the the main box. And the, also, the other thing was, because my Sky Q box is quite old, the latest ones have got um, HDR, haven't they? Yes. But I got to pay fifty pound plus install fee for that if I want it. I would have negotiated that as I part tried, of I tried, I tried, I tried, and he said no, no, we can't do that. I'd have just turned around and said, well, in that case, then cancel my subscription. Yeah, well, I, then... already, I forgot completely about it at the time, and yeah, <clears throat> but 
Yeah, that's a bit of a rip off though. I mean, if I've been with them for seven years, you think you should be able to just put, you know, put a new box in. Seven years? Man, I've been with them for 23. No, well, I, 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 before then I was off and on, off and on, but this is seven concurrent. <coughs> yeah, I've been 23 concurrent. And do you get anything out of Sky Rewards? Because I did moan about that. I get no out of Sky Rewards. <laughs> because I always do the football. So you get you can get two tickets for whatever game you want in the Premiership and you put your name down. Also, I've done the cinema stuff before and all of that. I've never won Stiggly Squat out of it. No. And I, you know, I thought that if you're, if you're a longer VIP, like yourself, say. No, it doesn't a, make any difference. Hmm. I've just had more years of getting nothing out of VIP. <laughs> so yeah, did, uh, oh, um, I didn't tell you, did I? I had a major uh, issue with my computer. My computer had been—it's—it's it's never been totally right. There's always been something that's just been a little bit off. And I thought I tracked it down to hmm. being—I um, had a USB uh, hard drive plugged in. <clears throat> Mm. And sometimes it'd either take ages to plug in or it wouldn't boot upright or whatever. Yeah. And then one day I took this USB hard drive out and it was a lot better, but it was still not 100% right. You know, when you sort of like feel this isn't operating correctly. Mm. And I was looking at an event viewer and there was loads of critical events and stuff like that happening and stuff would, you know, occasionally get blue screens which how often do you get blue screens in windows 10 really mm. and then i thought oh, i'm getting sick of this and anyway uh was it week before last my computer um, shut it down as normal turned it on wouldn't boot up it would boot but then it would say that there was the bcf or something file was missing so i ended up having to completely wipe uh my install i've seen this is moving um, right since you bought it though is it no it was all right and then it just it's just sort of like seemed to have deteriorated I, I, but mm. i always thought that maybe because it's got an you know the nvme pci for that maybe it was just a little bit you know i've got a bad one or something because mm. it always seemed to boot up slowly that was resolved by removing the external hard drive from the usb port because now it's super quick but I had this problem after taking it out because I was still getting problems. So uh, anyway, I rebuilt the PC, refresh install of Windows, all of this, that and the other. I tried all of the recovery procedures that you you get within Windows, but none of them worked. It yeah. just kept saying you can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. <clears throat> um, anyway, eventually I got the machine back up and running after about six hours of messing around and you know installing all my old software and all of this that and the other fortunately i always stick all of my uh data you know my profile data and mm. documents and all that onto the d drive rather than uh onto the c drive and touch wood it's been a lot better yeah so like it feels stable now if you know what i mean and i've actually switched on uh the uh, what you call it module you need for Windows 11 and I'm sort of like now thinking oh, maybe I'll just hold off on Windows 11 a little bit longer and enjoy a stable operating system yeah um, I'll stick with what I'm using here for the moment um, so yeah but yeah I think anything yeah, yeah just one quick thing I've ordered a fridge um, and you said exactly what you were, I've got the Xbox fridge coming yeah fan so. boy <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wanted something to, just to few to call a few cans of something. Yeah. So I saw it was on Zavi at the moment. Yeah. So. All yeah. right. Okay. So I purchased it. Um, I'm doing it as a I'm doing it as a three month payment plan. I thought I'd do it like that, make it easier. Nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Mrs. doesn't know about that one yet. She yeah. Well, this? <laughs> we we promised my son one of those for his birthday. Hmm. If we could get all to one. They're available now on Zavi. That's why I just, I've only just ordered it yet the other day. Right. <clears throat> so if you ever look on there, you might well, because I just, it come up in, in, a, in an email or something. I just saw it on there, but you know. Yeah, I'll tell her it does. So anyway, should we, um, should we move on? Yep. No longer a dream, but a reality. Okay. So. Game this week's not good news. Do you want to um, chat about something you probably purchased? Uh, well, I'm in the queue. 
in the queue for one. <laughs> in the queue for one. Uh, and that is the Steam Deck has launched. Now, there's about six available to man or beast at the moment, and that's just with people that are in the know that have got one. Yeah, the the uh, versions are available. Well, there's a couple of different versions. I think there's mm. the 64 gigabyte uh, version, which, let's face it, after you've installed the operating system, what you're going to do, play a you know, very cheap indie game on something like that. Mm. There is, I think, the... 256 gig and 512 gig version as well yeah so i've gone for the one with the maximum storage um i've heard you're going to be eventually able to update the ssds in these as well and i've been mm. watching things like linus tech tips and js2 sense and stuff like that where they've been doing breakdowns of all of these and you know showing you the insides and it is a kind of, well, it looks like a bit of a kind of custom sort of uh, ssd but i'm sure that somebody will release something for that and they seem to not recommend it but not be opposed to you taking it apart as well so you can like you should they tell you how to do change the sticks in it if you get drift and stuff like that which is quite good yeah uh but anyway that's been launched now so mine's going to be arriving uh late quarter two early quarter three sort of three uh, qu- uh quarter three sort of thing um if you want to find out more about the Steam Deck and its capabilities, which is basically it's a PC in the form of like a Switch sort of <clears> shape. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's a really good re- review by Digital Foundry. And it's they're, what they're basically saying is it appears to be running PC games, modern ones, you know, like, mm. for, well, modern PC games like Horizon Forbidden West, which mm. is quite demanding on a PC. Um it's running those at effectively equivalent to a PS4 uh, quality, mm. but at 800p, not at 1080p. But the screen is only but 800p, it doesn't... and it's only a seven-inch screen, so it's not going to make it's... much difference. Of course, there. if you, you you don't need a high quality with a, such a small screen, do you? No, you don't. That, <clears> that's which people point. don't get sometimes, but yeah. And I I think what you've got to remember is this is something that can run games, modern games, like a PS4 but mm. fits in your hand. How often will you... I, I still put this question to people, and I, I, how often will you use it? I think I'll use this quite a lot because... I don't mean just in the in the little room on your own when you... No, 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 no. Um, I'll, I'll actually use it... The, I know the times I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it when I'm watching a movie, mm. sitting in the deck, because I, the options are I either watch the movie and watch it on one of my screens while I'm doing something else, Mm. or I watch it on the big TV and use a Steam Deck. Mm. And if I want to watch a 4K movie, I definitely have to sit on the couch and watch the big TV. Uh, don't, you also, con- don't you want to concentrate on the film, though, at the same time? It depends. Sometimes I like, I'm like uh, you know, doing a bit of multitasking. Oh, just uh, a bit of achievement or two. OK, yeah, right. On Steam? Mm. Well, no, but... but... Yeah, I'm not sure, on Steam. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll be... <laughs> Game Pass will be on that at some point. I'm going to say that now. Well, I'll be, able to do, I'll be able to do cloud gaming on it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so I'll do it then. I'll also use it going into the <clears throat> uh, living room and, you know, the missus watching whatever, and I'll I'll go on that. Just going to Google something. Yeah, OK. So, yeah, they're, uh, so I I'm, I'm can't wait until I've got mine and I'll do a full unboxing and, you know, sort of like breakdown as soon as I've got it so that... Uh, could share the joy as it were and see what we think evidently the operating system's still a little bit rough but let's face it i don't think any of us were really um sort of not expecting that to start off with yeah because i there was a little story it was brewing over the last couple of days yeah and um valve valve had announced they got no intention of creating like a steam pass but they said they're open to talk to microsoft to getting game pass on steam yeah uh, which is over the last couple of days, which is ironic from that point of view. Yeah. Um, which would be great for you in one way. Oh, certainly would. It'd be popping achievements like you wouldn't believe. We're just sitting there and you're missing everything. Get off that and go do the housework. Yep. Every couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ding. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it looks like a really nice piece of kit. And, yeah. I, and you know, well, we all love new tech, don't we? Mm. Um, the other thing about uh, is a bit of news about Steam Deck for enthusiasts are booting up on Steam 
OS 3. So Steam Deck, was, uh, Deck users, because there are people out there now who have these, will be pleased to hear that Valve has just released a new version of the Steam OS image. Now, mm. this isn't the full version of Steam OS 3 that many people have been waiting for, but it will be coming soon, uh, according to Valve. What this doesn't mean, uh, oh, sorry, that doesn't mean that the news isn't welcome because uh, the Steam OS image will basically give you, as a Steam Deck user, plenty of recovery options because a lot of people have been installing Windows on the Steam Deck, yeah. for example, because it will run Windows. It will. It is a PC. It is a mm. PC in the size of a something that's not much bigger than a Switch. Probably um, bigger though, isn't it? I think, isn't it? I think it is. It is. Well. It is bigger. Uh, and, uh, and heavier, but I'm going to drop it. <laughs> no, but let's. It you know, is let's, five. Let's... It's five hundred, isn't it? Sorry. How much is it? Uh, the version I'm getting five seventy. Same price as a a next gen console. More. Mm. But uh, the cheapest one is about three hundred and something. Yeah. They, they've they've staged it in a hundred pound difference, about just about each time. So, mm. but. Uh, don't forget as well the memory is also expandable beyond the ssd by using micro sd cards mm. and evidently it's more or less just as quick to download it and play a game off the micro sd as it is off the ssd so how they've done that i don't know yeah. uh, but it, it does look really interesting like i said have a look at the digital foundry uh youtube on it because they do a really really good analysis uh, of it and i think it's very balanced uh, but anyway with this new steam os image that is being made available for people if you do have a steam deck and you put windows on and you think well actually the drivers aren't there at the moment for uh, the steam deck and want to go back to steam os and you think oh no i can't now well you mm. can because this new image will give steam deck users plenty of recovery options uh should there something go wrong with the new portable device or they want to roll it back to another version of the operating system or a mm. different operating system <coughs> of oh, their operate so yeah uh, more to be had about steam in the coming future mm. yeah i know I, i've had a, i mean i have my my playstation portable but i just don't use them long enough i mean i i don't even play games on my own phone really that much to be honest so well i never play games on my phone no what i'm saying is as, as being portable as an idea of playing do you know what i mean let alone you know anything else so uh but yeah if, if you're going to get a lot of use out of it and it's kind of yeah I mean, <clears> the, the, other, the other thing i haven't mentioned is that there is evidently a steam deck dock going to be released soon as well mm so um same idea as the switch then yeah uh yes yeah, so you can use it on your big screen tv mm. uh but there's a list of games that will you know that have been checked and work fine with steam yeah. um, and if it's running games like horizon forbidden west you know that is a beautiful look it's not forbidden mm. west uh horizon zero dawn mm. uh that is a beautiful looking game and quite demanding oh yeah absolutely <coughs> interesting mm. Mm. Any you're not going to get a, you're not going to get a switch to to, to play that. Let's put no. it that way. That's no. Nintendo games for Christ's sake. They won't be that big, will they? <laughs> Don't alienate the Nintendo listeners, Steve. <laughs> and then no, Nintendo not, is is for adults. It's not just for kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, I had a Wii once. <laughs> you know, yeah. had to talk about my bladder. <laughs> yeah, it was it was when you were in the service, uh, going in through the uh, motorway services, wasn't it? You had a Wii. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. No, we actually did have one. Yeah, back in the day. But uh... yeah. Anything else? I mean, the only other bit of news is Call of Duty is being postponed for 2023. Sorry, I, I missed that on Call of Duty. What was that? It's postponed for 2023. There's not going to be a Call of Duty. That's the first time in years. About 15. Yeah. Um, is it a bit coincidental that it's around the same time that Microsoft would do the acquisition? Or am I just being hypothetical? <laughs> it, it it could be that, or it might be something at all to do with the fact that half of the developers are going to be uh, conscripted Sad. to go into uh, a world <laughs> war. <laughs> Who knows? It could be any of the above. Oh, good, yeah. But um, hey ho. Anyway, let's move swiftly on then. <clears throat> so, all right, I'll do the new releases then, if you like. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so we've got Little Orpheus on all platforms on the first of the third. For the third, we've got Babylon's Fall on the PC, PS4, and PS5 from Square Enix. 
On the fourth, we had Gran Turismo 7, PS5, PS4, uh, Triangle Strategy on the Switch, it's also on the fourth. On the eighth, we've got Spell, Spell Force 3 Reforced on PS5, PS4, Xbox and Series X from Nordic. And on the tenth, we have got the Workshop Simulator, PC, PS4 and Xbox. Distant Worlds is also two on the PC. On the 16th, we've got Tunic on Xbox Series X on the Xbox One. On the 17th, we have Persona 4 Arena Ultimate. I don't even know what that is, but I'm sure I'll find out. PC, PS4 and Switch. I think it's a dancing game, maybe, maybe it's something like that. Uh, Stranger of Paradise on the 18th. Uh, Final Fantasy Origin on PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Lots of- Gran Turismo is, is, well, we'll talk about that later because I've, I've got some questions and your thoughts on that. But we won't talk about it. Do you want to do the subscriptions? Okay, so with Games with Gold, we've got uh, the Flame in the Flood, available from the 1st to the 31st of March. Street Power Soccer, available 16th of March to the 15th of April. Sacred <coughs> 2 Fallen Angel, available 1st to the 15th of March. And SpongeBob's Truth or Square, available 16th to the 31st. On Game Pass, there is... Far, Changing Tides on console, cloud and PC. Microsoft Flight Simulator on cloud from the 1st of March. Lightning mm-hmm. Returns, Final Fantasy 13 on console and PC on the 3rd. Kentucky Route Zero, console, uh, cloud and PC on March 10th. Lawn Mowing Simulator on the Xbox One, March 10th. That's the one that Steve will be going for. Yay. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy <coughs> Cloud uh, Console and PC on March 10th, which is a good game. I've got that on PlayStation. Glad I didn't buy, <laughs> buy it on Xbox. Uh, Young Souls Cloud Console and PC March 10th. Shredders on March 17th. A Memoir Blue on March 24th. And Crusade Kings 3 March 29th. And we, uh, sorry, Weird West on the 31st of March. Uh, I'll do mine to do PlayStation Plus, give you a breather. So Ghost Runner on the PS5. Uh, we have PS5, PS4, we've got Ghost of Tsushima Legends. PS4, we've got Ark Survival Evolved. Also, we've got Team Sonic Racing. PS5, GTA Online, bonus available from the 15th of March. PlayStation Now, we have Shadow Warrior 3, Crisis Remastered. Goggles on for this one, excuse my ears. Relicta? Relic? Is that what did you say that? Relic? Relicta? Relicta. Relicta. And Chicken Police paints it red. PS Games Leaving is just Mafia Definitive Edition. Staying just here for a minute, what's your thoughts on the rumours about their own version of Game Pass soon? Well, they've always, they've always had their own version of Game Pass. No, but they, in two parts. Doing, they, they are going to be actually, well, I don't say going to be competing with it because they'll have to go a long way for that and i don't think they can do it but um they're bringing something out i think they're going to announce something that's going to be a bundle yeah um and evidently you can't now get playstation now it's just playstation plus Mm. Uh, i've not checked that but i've heard uh that and evidently in italy some people are already getting the combination of playstation plus and now yeah maybe it's going to be maybe it's going to be announced at e3 possibly something like that i'm sure we'll find out very soon yeah, yeah, but interesting to see what they're gonna, what their take on it is, and what they're gonna sort of give the give the guys. So yeah, absolutely. Do you want to do Twitch and Epic? Yeah, sure. So uh, with Twitch, we've got Madden NFL 22. Uh, that actually is uh, claimable on Origin. Surviving Mars, which is quite a good game uh, as well. We've got Steam World Quest uh, Hand of Gilgamesh. We've got Look Inside the Sa- uh, Stillness of the Wind. Crypto Against All Lords and uh, Pester Quest. And then on Epic right now, uh, up until the March the 10th, we've got Black Widow Recharged, Centipede Recharged and Epic Slayer Kit. Uh, and then from the 10th to the 17th is uh, City Skylines. I'm sure that's been on there before. Maybe getting confused with probably somewhere else it's been on, maybe. No, I th- occasionally they do, they do repeat stuff on... Uh, on epic mm-hmm. there's been you know the times when i've had stuff uh they, they've advertised it as a free giveaway but it was, was given away the year before mm. okay all right so if we jump into games i think you can start because you've got plenty to chat about okay so i suppose the one thing i'll start off with is the oculus quest 2 <clears throat> so mm. 
Um, I did an unboxing of this that's uh, available on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash pop culture gamers. Um, so let's have a, a, I'll go through it all. So the headset, really, really comfortable. Um, one thing I do like a lot of the earlier VR headsets, the eyepieces were sort of fixed, but on the Oculus Quest 2, you can actually um, move the lenses in or out. So that if you if your eyes are slightly wider set as mine are, you can move it out. Whereas my son on his one, he has to move them in because his you know his eyes are in a slightly different position. So right. that obviously means because of the type of lens that they've got, you need to sort of have that centre sweet spot on the lens right mm. in front of your eyes because it becomes increasingly blurry the further out that you get. Can you use glasses with it for people? Yes, you can. Yeah, my son's got glasses and he uses his all the time. There's actually a spacer that comes with uh, the Oculus headset. So if you've got glasses, it just moves it slightly (coughs) further forward so Mm. that your glasses don't scratch. You can actually even get, uh, I've I've not seen where where you can get this, but I've read about it. You can actually get prescription uh, Oculus lenses so that you don't have to wear glasses, but you can still use Mm. the headset. Yeah, because even from my point of view with the PlayStation VR headset, I can get away without using my glasses. Yeah. With the having to be able to take it in and out. Yes. For, for my, the way my eyes work, it, I don't have to wear them, luckily. It, I think it, for me, I think it'd feel a bit uncomfortable, but um, I'm sure your son will be telling you if it wasn't up. He seems to be quite he, happy with he, it. He's been using his an awful lot because he's, he's had one for months. He's yeah. had one since Christmas because mm. uh, that was his Christmas present. But, uh, yeah, very comfortable. Uh, like I said, you can change. The, there's three settings for the uh, for way of the eye <coughs> is on. Uh, there's a optional extender, as I mentioned, and you can e- either have the sort of like spongy, velouri sort of frame around if, you're, if you prefer that sort of thing to be resting on your actual skin, or there's a more rubberized surround that you can actually attach. It's very easy to do, just takes a few seconds. Personally, I preferred the rubber the rubberized uh, version because it's a bit cooler on your skin and a bit more comfortable. Mm. And the he- headset's really easy to adjust. There's one strap that goes over the top, and then there's a couple of sort of like sliding in and out straps on there. Uh, there is an Oculus uh, replacement strap which you can buy it's about 50 pounds mm. but uh evidently it's not very good it breaks stuff like that but there are lots of other third party headset uh straps as well mm. uh yeah, some of cool. which have got very good write-ups <clears throat> uh connectivity uh initially had a bit of a problem with the headset being recognized uh but it was okay once it did it was just uh the technical term i think is a lot of faffing around to get it to work. <laughs> but you get that with any headset. I mean, when I put my yeah. set, when I reset mine up in here for the PlayStation, it didn't work the first time. I had to muck around with it. Oh, what's going on there? It's, it's been, looks after well. And it was, <coughs> yeah. I was faffing around and eventually I got it working. You know, yeah. I think that's just the way some technology is. And that it's, you have to. Well, particularly this, because, but because you can actually connect wirelessly, which is what I was trying to do. Mm. Uh, but you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. And the thing is, in my house, I've got two Wi-Fi networks. Oh, OK. Just because I have to, you know. Um, although the Wi-Fi net, or the, rather, I've got a wired and Wi-Fi and mm. then a sub Wi-Fi off the wired, as mm. it were. Uh, so that it is technically one's a mesh, one's just like your normal. Sort so, of what, network. so what stuff have you been... What stuff have you been doing with it? What have you been testing with at the moment? Well, I'll I'll come to that in a shortly. But what what I've what I was going to say about the connectivity is I've got a USB C to C, obviously USB three connector, mm. which is a good quality cable. You know, nicely braided as well, and all of this, that, and the other. It was quite an expensive cable, um, and I've also got a USB A to USB-C because the connector on the headset is USB-C but both times it was reported that my headset was connected via USB-2 and not 3 but I I mean I solved that by the horrendously expensive Oculus Quest you know 
proprietary cable and then it just <laughs> it says oh yeah all's well now they had you for ransom on that one then didn't they yeah they did they did kind of. but <laughs> i definitely yeah because uh, my son's had this problem as well but uh it's it's just a whole load of stupidness because the cable is usb3 i know it is it says on the cable usb3 and mm. you, i don't think you get usb c on usb2 <clears throat> so it's, it's in my head now you don't get usb c connections on usb2 because right. i think okay. it came in with it's gen 3.1 isn't it basically yeah um anyway but with the oculus quest there's no connection issues as soon as you've booted up your headset and you've gone through the sort of like sign in screen which you know you could which i've put a password on mine or rather a pass shape i should say yeah yeah i'm with you uh the oculus star i found to be a bit naff to be fair because it doesn't do a good job of showing what is oculus quest 2 compatible um there's no there's no way it appears to filter uh, what works on Oculus Quest 2 and coming in new, I know that if I connect it to my PC either wirelessly or uh, via cable, I can do Oculus Quest, Oculus Rift stuff, yeah. but um, I just wanted to see what was Oculus Quest 2 not Rift, as it right. were um, and Is there any does... difference between, I mean are the games better from that point of view, or is it just... Well, uh, I th- yeah, because it uses the power of your PC. Right. Where, as opposed to, you know, having like a mobile phone processor, as it were. Um, but it does tell you what is Oculus Quest 2, but the, obviously, uh, so like, for example, Vader Immortal, which is one of the games that I've bought, uh, that game uh, does play on the Quest 2, but I think it plays through AirPlay, as opposed to playing through uh the actual thing itself because it, it says oh it's uh you know the touch controllers mm. compatible but it says it's uh rift and rift s as opposed to quest but i can still play it on my oculus quest 2 but th- like i said i think it's transmitting it either wirelessly or through a cable <laughs> to my quest yeah <clears throat> uh, although anybody who knows more about that you know, please let me know because I'm assuming that because it doesn't say it's Oculus Quest 2 per se, as it were. Um, AirPlay has been really seamless, uh, you know, from a PC uh, when I did finally get connection. Uh, very unusual to connect to the PC and control your actual PC as well, because you can actually bring up whatever monitor that you want on your PC. <clears throat> You know, I've yeah. got three monitors. There's a button I can press on this like virtual control panel, and then I can have my my computer monitor screen appear in front of me. Oh, okay. Um, one thing I do like about the Quest as well is, you know, on PlayStation where you just sort of like plug yourself in a room and that's it for your boundaries. Yeah. You know, you you know when you get into your boundary is when you you know you shatter that priceless vase that's on your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. figure whatever um that ming you know, vase that is worth the fortune is now worth yeah it. yeah okay. yeah all, all of that sort of stuff well it's not like that on the quest because what it gets you to do is when you relocate to a new uh position mm. is it gets you to define what your playable area is and where the floor is and stuff like that yeah. and then uh, it will say, well, you know, you don't have a, a lot of space here or whatever. And if there's anything in the way, it'll say, can you move that? Because it's, it's in part of the gaming area. And if you step outside of that, mm. the cameras on the outside of the headset come on and you see a black and white image of your world. I can <coughs> imagine that. Okay. So you, if you understand what I mean, you sort of like, you know, like the way that Star Trek Holodeck is on the next generation. Yeah. Well, you see that, but in sort of like blue and pinky red sort of <laughs> colour uh, yeah. as a grid showing where where you've drawn to say this is a safe area for me to be. And once you walk outside of that, you see that sort of grid in front of you, but you see your room as it is, but in black and white. OK, I, I, I'm just trying to imagine that. Yeah, OK, I think you went for it. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, uh, quite an interesting experience because obviously you can then see people walking around and stuff like that as well. Yeah. I mean, so, so, 
you know you can image your, your PC the same way that the Xbox would Xbox so the PlayStation would have your you can view your desktop as such of the of the PlayStation yeah which is the we, same yeah but you could do yeah. that you could do that on your PC yeah I mean a lot of this as well is also controlled through your mobile phone because it's an Oculus app that you download to your phone yeah because I've still got I've still got my Samsung Oculus headset it's in a box now these days but um and it was an oculus store for what you wanted to get you yeah. know use whether you're going to use something like what you want to talk about in a minute or yeah. or or a game or something as well you know yeah uh the touch controllers they're great they're very much like the sort of shape that the windows uh mr controllers are like like that steve if you can see so it's oh sort yeah of like... that's it i've seen them yeah that's it yeah, it's a, a a ring with uh, a couple of buttons on each side and a stick. <laughs> it just looks a bit naughty, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it kind of kind of like looks like uh, somebody's put on uh, you know one of those nineteen seventies uh, sort of plastic bracelets that a lot of sort of hippie types kind of wore yeah. oh, on top of a, on top of a cornetto. <laughs> That's what it kind of looks like. <laughs> oh, it could be from uh, maybe I'm being too rude, but yeah, I'm not getting rude right now. But yeah, go on. <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's not go there. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. Um, but uh, they're quite nice to control. Uh, I've had a go on Netflix. Now, this is where it's been a bit of a revelation for me because yeah, uh, you don't have to wear headphones to use the Oculus because it gives really good quality sound without wearing headphones. And while it's audible to mm-hmm. other people in the room, yeah. It's like somebody listening to headphones on loud. Right. Yeah, sort of thing. But mm. to you, it sounds perfectly normal. So when we come to uh, talk about one of the things that we've both watched, mm. I actually watched half of that series lying on my couch, watching it through Oculus while my wife was watching Border Patrol on Sky <laughs> in the same <laughs> room. So, uh, yeah, um so you know it's uh the 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 netflix app is really really great uh you can watch it on a virtual screen that's a, that is the equivalent of about eight or ten feet uh feet yeah across. i i think i've watched um i watched <coughs> i watched netflix on on the play on the playstation version on that on that just a, a 2d image and i've done the same thing with some movies as well with yeah. that um what was the obviously from the 3D point of view and all of that, how did that come? In? How did that go? Uh, well, it, it doesn't show you 3D movies. No. What what oh, it does it? do is no, it gives you a flat screen TV that's about eight feet across mm. in real world terms, uh, and then it puts you in sort of like a virtual flat, as it were. Mm-hmm. So you're know, a virtual environment, and yeah. when you start a movie, <clears throat> then the lights go down, but you can still see sort of like little silhouettes, mm. but on the mantelpiece above the TV, there is this sort of uh, like glowing thing that you can point at with your <coughs> touch controller, and then it goes into free mode because it's very much fixed at a certain height, and you've got to be in a certain orientation. Well, I was lying on the sofa looking up, so mm. I couldn't see the screen, so I had to sit up, you know, at ninety degrees to be able to watch the screen, and I thought, well. Surely they must have thought people might want to watch something laid down. And then I found, you know, by going onto this uh, this uh, area, that it takes you out of the flat and then it puts you in this sort of like mid-grey virtual space. There's nothing around other than the screen and a couple of control buttons, one of which is to either enlarge or uh, shrink the screen. Another one is to uh, sort of fo- track your head as you as you move around another one is to define where you want the screen to go and then another one is sort of like a slow track or something like that Mm. so what i was able to do is get myself comfortable and then say right okay look where where i'm looking now and then i decided that's how that's you know i'm sort of like looking like that i'm looking straight forward and then I said, right, that, and I, and I froze the screen there so that's that your, I could that's then, your fixed view. Yeah. yeah, that's my fixed view then. And then I could make the screen as big or as small as I want. Mm. And I could sit and watch it. And obviously, you know, I could hear it all really, really well. I could still hear what was going on in the living room, but I could more hear the Oculus sound, which was really good quality. Yeah. 
so that's been great. And I was able to watch two or three uh, shows of what we've been watching on the trot, doing that, you know, without real fatigue on my eyes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, so really, you know, that from that perspective, just for watching movies, it's really good. Mm. Uh, I've done some of the YouTube experiences, which are great 3D sort of visual experiences. There's you've loads done, of them on there. You've done some roller coasters and stuff like that. And yeah, I did the uh, Back to the Future ride and yeah. stuff like that as well. You mm-hmm. know, all of that sort of thing. Um, Oculus also have events on, so you can watch sort of concerts or NASA do like uh, weekly broadcasts from the ISS and stuff like that, or you can watch launches and all of that, which is absolutely fantastic. And <clears throat> I was watching, I was doing one, uh, watching this one thing on the ISS, watching a, an astronaut come out of the airlock and stuff like that. And I remember looking, I was thinking, God, the airlock door is tremendously thin. <laughs> You'd have thought it would have been like <laughs> this massively thick thing. And it looked, yeah. it, it looked like, a bin with padding, <laughs> bed lid with padding. Do you know what I mean? It looked no, really no, small. I know exactly. What you mean. It's funny because you always look how that works. You think, my word, you know, it's um, yeah. Um, and then I mean, some of that stuff's quite visual, and I think it's really cool to watch. Oh, it is. And there's there's some really good ones where you sort of like uh, some documentaries that are linked in with all of that as well. So it sort of takes you on a sort of like cosmos or the planets a sort of thing right but with a doc you know with a in 3d with that documentary kind of going not that that particular one but you know the equivalent of yeah um, and then there's loads of that sort of stuff there's underwater ones and stuff like that as well i tried the amazon prime app and i gave up on it because mm. it's just it's... did you try did you try your plex not yet no because that would work uh, if they've got an app i don't even know if they've got an app yet well, no, because can't you go just by the PC point of view? Can't you just log into oh, it? Oh, yeah, with I me? Could. yeah, I could watch it that way. Yeah, because I've I've tried watching movies. Just I put a film on it, like Star Trek, or something, and you just seen the cinema. And it's quite quite good actually. Yeah, I did have a I did have a three D version of one of them, and um, that works quite well as well. So yeah, I tried the Prime uh, movie uh, app. Yeah. It didn't work half of the time. When it did work, it was tremendously slow, especially compared to Netflix, which was fa- probably faster than the TV. Oh, really? Yeah. So I kind of gave up on Amazon Prime for the time being. I thought they need to do more development. It puts you in this sort of like, uh, and the only way I can describe it is sort of semi roblox town come circus sort of environment that's mm. quite noisy. And then it takes it just ages, and then often you get error reports saying can't find or no connection or whatever. And I just thought, nah, come out of that. I'll I'll come back to that when uh, when I've mm. got it working. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was uh, my experience with that. And then in terms of what I've played, I've only really played one game on there, and that mm-hmm. would be Vader Immortal. So obviously a VR game. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's split into three episodes. Uh, the game lets you basically immerse yourself into that Star Wars universe and you can actually meet, or you actually meet Darth Vader, Lord of the Sith himself and his height is as he says, impressive I was about to say no, I to say it there, yeah. <laughs> but uh, his uh, you know, the mechanics of the game it's a, as, a, as it stands as a VR game, it's simple it's a very simple VR game as a go you do get to use a lightsaber. Oh yeah. Uh, for combat, you can reflect blaster bolts and kill stormtroopers, stuff like that. Uh, and you also have to do some fights as well. Uh, there's sort of there's a couple of uh, in episode one, uh, a couple of robots uh, or androids, whatever they are, with uh, you know those sort of sticks that were on uh, the third Star Wars movie where they rescued the Emperor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have those sort of sticks on. Was that the third one or was that the second one? Third one. Sure, but I, think... I can't remember now. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, they, they've got those sort of sticks so that you know they're sort of like you can't just cut through them with a lightsaber. Mm. As a game, it is really very linear, and it does not let you progress until you've done everything that you have to do. Uh, it can be a bit confusing at times when you th- when it's obviously waiting for you to do something and you've missed that cue because it doesn't actually remind you once it's gone, so you have to then figure it out. 
Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I hadn't re- I realised it was waiting for me to pick up my lightsaber, which was hanging from my belt, and ignite it <laughs> before it would go on to the next bit. And I was thinking, has the game crashed? Is it? <laughs> what's what's going on? You know, and then I, I kind of like was looking down and around myself, and I thought, oh, there's my lightsaber, and I thought, I wonder if it's, and then I ignited it, and then it was straight in again. Um, <clears throat> evidently, episode two, uh, you use force powers. I haven't played episode two yet, but I've, mm. I do have all three. Okay, interesting. Uh, but it's uh, quite immersive when you know you sort of like see quite realistic looking stormtroopers coming up to you and shooting you. Oh, really? Yeah. It's quite a good experience, actually. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind some of those sort of things. They're quite cool to do. Yeah, they have a limited lifespan, unfortunately. But um... oh, they do. I think a couple of times, and then that'd be it. And as it stands, Vader Immortal is quite expensive. But I got that for the Star Wars fandom. I didn't get it for the fact I thought it was going to be. Of course you did. Of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't expect anything else, Hayden. No, no, that was definitely a fanboy move, not a quality gamer move. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. So that's it. That's my experience so far of Oculus Quest 2. I've uh, got to connect it to Steam VR yet, but haven't done that. But just that's more of a time thing rather than anything else. Mm. Oh, good. Look forward to hearing if you've got any decent games to report for it. I'm sure there are some people out there that do have this kit. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there's uh, people in the group who have. Mm. Um, and I've been having a chat with one or two of them uh, as well. So uh, thanks for the tips on what games to get, guys. Brilliant. Um, my other game is the big one for PlayStation fans, which is Horizon Forbidden West. Yes. Um, I haven't completed the first one yet myself, I must admit. I should go back to it at some point. You should do. But um, so is it, all, is it all about hype or is it as good as they say they are? Or uh, It's a good game. Uh, so this is obviously the new the follow-up to uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, the game is available on a PS4, PS4 Pro and PS5. It follows on from the last game. Uh, basically, the story is a new uh, plague known as the Blight is destroying life. Blight and, is not in Halo, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so also in this. <laughs> but in an attempt to uh, prevent the spread by, uh, or rather Alloy, in an attempt to prevent the spread, is uh, looking to restore the backup of the terraforming artificial intelligence known as Gaia. Mm. Uh, so Alloy travels to the Forbidden West to basically save the world. As with the previous game, there are sort of bands and tribes that you've got to be, either befriend or fight. There are various mechanics and creatures, uh, and or mechanical creatures there, and there seems to be a bit more variation in this game, I think. Uh, each machine can be quite formidable in its own uh, right, uh, and they do also travel in herds quite often. They can be quite overwhelming, but uh, you can use Alloy's focus to locate each machine's weak points, the different parts that can be harvested uh, if they're successfully removed before the machine is destroyed. So you sort of like shoot bits off with arrows and stuff like that. So you've got to place your shots correctly. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Flight uh, fights can be. Uh, quite intensive, uh, you know, in a flurry, and then defensive or offensive, as the case may be. But they've done some crafting uh, changes, so crafting the right ammo and knowing what to use can feel a bit complicated as each machine has their own sort of, like, relentless attacks and some will be weaker to acid, some will be weaker to other things. Mm. Uh, The fight mechanics have pretty much stayed consistent with Zero Dawn, uh, but there are uh, plenty of quality of life improvements that will basically uh, mean you're not going to have to dig around through loads and loads of different menus to uh, craft stuff in real time, which makes the uh, the combat a lot easier. And also some hot swapping without going into menus of uh, mm. weapons and stuff like that, which is quite useful. Visually, is it pretty good? I'm sure oh, it will be. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I put some screenshots and that up. And if anybody wants to see what the game looks like on the PS5, uh, have a look at the uh, Pop Culture Gamers uh, YouTube channel uh, because I did a couple of uh, a live stream or two from there. I also tried it on my PS4 Pro 
But how did you find the differences then? I'm interested in that because not that I'll be picking up any day soon, but it could be a point where if I if I've still got a pro at the moment and I may want to jump in on that. There is a difference, but it still look, it's absolutely gorgeous on both. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're not getting some of the <clears throat> stuff that's the power of the PlayStation Four. Um, no, how? Yeah, speaking of the power of the PlayStation Four, what's it like for the controller then? All that stuff. How's that? How's that come across? Oh, that comes across really well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The uh, game makes good use of the PS5 Dual Sense controller with things like pulse scanning, crafting, all having different uh, adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. Hmm. Because I say I haven't experienced that, so I don't understand it. If you're with me, it's until you've actually done it. Yeah. I don't think you get it, if you know what I mean, and experience it. Yeah. I mean, you know. in in terms of uh, the uh, visuals, the most noticeable improvement, really, the way that the game runs and it's is its uh, lighting and water effects, I would say. Yeah. Finer details such as facial animations also appear more natural than they did in the previous game and probably than they do on the PS4 and Pro. Mm. Uh, but it's definitely one of the best-looking games. I mean, the, the game as it stands anyway, just from a, from the pro point of view, was um, pretty impressive. If it's still going to be like that anyway, I'd be chuffed to play it, if you're with me. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would have thought it's going to be, you know, you're going <clears> to, <throat> the game's still going to have that. Yeah. There's also um, different modes for playing as well. So there's a performance mode favouring 60 FPS at either 1080p or 1440p, and yeah. quality mode for those who prefer the 4K visuals, but that's at 30 FPS. Would you recommend someone hold off and wait till they got a PS5, or would you say, you know, go with no, it? No, go in now because it's a free upgrade anyway, so just, just get it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many games out at the minute, it's, it's probably being pushed to one side a little bit, isn't it, now? I don't with, think so. With Elden Ring and other games and that, I think, you know... But maybe I'm wrong. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I mean, no, because Elden Ring is very much your soul sort of fan. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a niche game. Yes, um, I'm not yet to experience it. I will do at one point. At some point, I'm sure I will. But yeah, um, I'm yet. I'm staying clear of Elden Ring because while I kind of enjoyed Bloodborne uh, up to a point, I did find the game a bit frustrating in terms of well a lot um and the same with uh you know dark souls yeah, one two right. and three as well I've, I've played i've played the whole lot of them they're just not my kind of game yeah um <clears throat> i play games because i want it to be more enjoyable well not everybody it, has it, different it, sort of enjoyment i i i play some people like to pull the hair out some people don't yeah it, to be honest i have a job that is more stressful i don't want as much stress in my gaming gaming is a hobby not a chore and i find playing games like bloodborne and i'm sure elden ring would be the same i would find it a chore rather than a pleasure Mm. and that just takes out the enjoyment of playing video games yeah yeah i get that so i i'm i'm just it's it's a franchise that i'm glad other people like it but i know it's not for me Mm. you know it's if you like it good on you pleased for you just i just don't expect me to review it because <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and the last time i made uh, a mistake like that was uh with uh returnal mm. and i think i've sort of like gave myself a bit of a vow after that of i knew i wouldn't like returnal in the long run yeah uh so don't bother with it mm. and you know I don't bother with those sort of games in the future and while returnal is quite different to uh the new you know the uh, elden ring uh i'm just i have no interest mm. it's, it's it's there are elements that are the same which are the mechanics i don't like yeah no i get it is it, it is um a niche in its own in its own, own way anyway isn't it so and there's nothing about with that no no i'm not even sure if i'd like it I, that's my problem I, I i don't feel like i want to pull the trigger on a game like that and feel it's not really for me because I like the RPG element side of things. But from the other other point of view, would I be throwing a controller at the, at the TV at that at some point? That's my only problem. Yeah, I mean, for for me, Returnal was more of an experiment. In is it the fact that it's knights and dragons I don't like, or is it the gameplay mechanics? 
Yeah, because Dragons isn't a bad thing, is it? No, but it's also not my first choice of, you know, I I really hate it when people mix science fiction with fantasy because to me that is like mixing cooking with crime solving. They're mm. two completely different genres. Um, you know, yes, okay, you can, you know, have a murderer of a cook and then you've crossed a genre, like you can have, you know, mages in you know uh, a science fiction sort of thing mm. but to, to me they are normally very very different uh things entirely and it's i thought maybe it's just the fact that it's fantasy i'm not getting so i thought because returnal is a in principle similar gameplay mechanic mm. to uh dark souls and stuff like that and i know people be getting oh it's not but it is um i thought Let's go for the sci-fi and see if if that makes a difference for me, and it made no difference at all. <laughs> yeah. So it was an expensive sixty quid experiment, but it I was know, a that's successful my, that's, one. That's, that's the point. Yeah, games well, too expensive now to risk. buy something that you just you know that in the long run it's not going to work out for you, or even in the short run, which it would be. Yeah, I mean, if we go back to what I've been playing, so I've been putting the PlayStation on. <laughs> and with all the with all with all the hype we going through, because obviously we had the PlayStation One, and we all played. Well, I assume you played Gran Turismo as much as I did, maybe. And it was one of my sort of first loves in driving games at the time. And I thought, <clears throat> okay, well, I've got Gran Turismo Sport, which was the last iteration. I don't even know if it was really Gran Turismo Six. I got confused with how they actually followed with the games at the time. Yeah. But I haven't played enough of it. I have been playing it, but I hadn't played enough, so I thought I'd just jump on for the. There's my Gran Turismo fix for now, and it's been upgraded a bit more. There's, they've changed a few things with it there, and it's it's quite good. But there's a there's an itch in my back I want to scratch, and that's Gran Turismo Seven. But I've been watching some reviews regarding the differences between the PS4 Pro and and the, and the PlayStation Five, and I don't know whether I'm going to get the I'm going to, if I got it early and played it on the Pro, would I then miss out and think, you know, and if I'd have saved it and waited until the day I ever did get another console? I don't know whether I should just purchase it because it comes with a free upgrade, doesn't it, this one? Yeah. And just play it and then then maybe play it when I get one day to, to maybe have a PlayStation 5 when they're available and I've got the money for it. Just get get it on a PS4 because you for all you know, you might never get a PS4. Because I, I mean they're, they're rare as rocking horse anyway. Um, so, but I, I do like I, Gran Turismo was one of those racing games that when it first came out, I was hooked. And me and my mate would be on the phone telling us what our, our racing times were, and then we were just battling like that yeah. way before the days of the internet, but just chatting over the phone. And I, I always try to I try not to compare it to Forza because I feel Forza is a different kind of racing game. So I'm not talking about Horizon, but when we talk about Forza 7, which I think will be the next one, isn't it? I think we'll see. Something like that, yeah. It's a different beast anyway. And I was playing today. Actually, I was playing I was playing when I was having my smart meter fit over the weekend. Right. This weekend, and um, there's some family stuff going on at the same time. So I put it on for a little bit anyway. Because uh, I had some people over. And I was quite enjoying it. And I'm thinking about... Do you know what? There's one thing this does that I well, I don't know if Grand but doesn't. It always has a rolling start. Never a race from the check, you know, from the beginning. Mm. I don't know if that's still a thing. With Forza, you're on the you're on the grid and you, you know it's go, 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 as if Murray was in the background screaming at you. But with Grand Turismo, it's always a rolling start in those games. I thought it I didn't think it was. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember the last time I played Gran Turismo. It was certainly before I had a PS five. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's just be just talking yeah. about that. But but I really like it, and I've been I've just been watching some IGN videos and some just comparisons and that. Obviously, I don't know what the controller will bring to you with the enhancements <laughs> with the five. <coughs> well, unfortunately, the dual sense is a bit like VR, as in you have to experience it to properly understand it. Exactly, I know, and I know that. Where if it's raining, I think, doesn't it, you feel the rain on the controller maybe or something? I don't know. You will feel the rain, rain on the controller. Uh, but the other thing you will also feel is the slipperiness of the 
surface because your triggers will be different. It's mm. quite an amazing uh, experience is when that full hand ticks on and the adaptive triggers mm. as to how that works because it does give an extra level of enhancement to the game. Yeah, and uh, I, I do like it. Even though I say they're two different beasts, I don't like one more than the other. I love them both in different ways. Yeah. But yeah, it, that's my little fix really at the moment. I've gone back onto playing that. Uh, yeah, really, I do enjoy it. Um, it just brings back memories of the old. But some of the music is not my taste anymore in this game. No. But they could bring back the feeder track that was in, I think it was in Grand Turismo 2, I can't remember now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, really, really good. Um, yeah, just play I just had a play around with that on the, on the PlayStation. Turned off again. <laughs> Th- thinking of PlayStation, I've got one of these because I've been playing my that's just PS3. Bl- that's just a blur. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been playing uh, my PS3. And this is a battery for a PS3 controller because my batteries have died. So uh, replacing batteries in old PlayStation controllers. Nightmare. It is because uh, I actually pulled on too much and locked the whole thing on one of the sort of like side triggers completely went all over the place. Mm. And uh, it has this sort of like piece of plastic that there must be some sort of metal resistance measurement on or whatever for the uh, top, you know, the the RBs as there would be on an Xbox controller. Mm. And you have to sort of like fold it over and into this piece of plastic that's in the part of the trigger. Uh, and it all came out and it was an absolute nightmare to get back in. Then you've got to clip this bit of rubber over the Did top of it. you just bought a new controller? Yeah, but it had been a second hand. I wouldn't have known, you know, the batteries would have probably still been shot Mm, uh, right. because they're all controllers and I wouldn't know what sort of state it was in if it had drift or whatever, at least I knew this controller was okay mm. um, it took me about an hour to put the blubber thing back together <laughs> and, now I've, and I did that just to go in to find out what sort of battery it had so now I've got to do the same thing again but to put the battery in, that'll be fun Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, so I've been playing that uh, what else? I've been there's no real game to talk about where I just been popping achievements for my re- re- Microsoft rewards, which I've been still doing. Yeah. And I I, I think I picked up a game, I don't know what it was called now, um, just to get a few achievements. It was about a guy, what's it called now? Oh, can I see it here? It's probably on my Xbox, actually. Let's have a look. No, I played it in the cloud. It's about a little kid that plays a guitar. That's all I need. It's a left and right stroller. All right, okay. Um, so I played that. I started to play something called X1, which is like you're flying a pebble in space. <laughs> yeah. all I can explain it. Popped a few achievements there. Um, I have actually did. I did play another game, and I, um, I don't know how far I'm into it at the moment because this is my second playthrough. But Cyberpunk has now got the Series X 4K. And yeah, it has. Yeah. So I've started my second character and really been enjoying that. It looks great. Plays great again. I know I didn't have too many problems with it on the uh, on its original outing, but I'd still recommend that game. I know some people maybe have put the uh, the dampers on it after all, after all this time now, but I, it's a good game and I, I really like it. Yeah. It's a good good GTA style open world fun Blade Runner esque game that you're going to get. So I've, yeah, so the first first playthrough was around 45 to 50 hours on that when I finished it, um, and there's some DLC coming at some point, so. I thought I'd start the second one and just just been sticking around enjoying that as well. That was quite good. Um, last thing to be playing was obviously is, um, Destiny. Yes, I've been playing that as well. Um, yeah, on the quiet, you don't say, come and join us, come and join us. No, you weren't on. You don't ask, because I could always be on. You weren't on. You weren't, so, you weren't even online. I'm always on. It's even on now. <laughs> um, I've really, actually, this has been one of my favourite stories in, in, in Destiny. The Witch Queen isn't easy by half and i think when you get to the last third of the story it's it's great i mean the whole thing is just brilliant anyway i've really really enjoyed the story on this Um, typical destiny probably it's it's going to be you know five or six hours maybe something again seven hours maybe i can't remember depends how you play it and short yeah i mean it's all about the end game stuff remember yeah and with uh which i won't say much of it as because you haven't finished anyway yet so i'm not going to say too much about it but yeah, I'm my I I've still got some things to do within the story part of it, even though I've completed the main 
quest of the story. So maybe you want to jump on a bit better at some point. Yeah. Um, um, where have I got to? I've got to uh, probably about the fourth or fifth story into the campaign where you go into the room and there's the guy who you can't kill. And then there's archways and each archway has got like a, a circular rune that you go in, kill a couple of guys in there, shoot the crystal, go on to the next That one. is called, I think that's called Ghosts, that chapter. Yeah, because you have to rescue a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's so where chap- I've got up to. So I've just completed one, that. So chapter one has four chapters within it. Yeah. Acts. Chapter two has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight acts in chapter two. And chapter three, which I, you, when you play chapter three, just play it to the end. It's in three parts and uh, it's great. It really is. I mean, are you did what did you, how did you purchase this then? Have you gone for everything? PC. No, everything? I, I just bought Witch Queen, uh, you know, upgrade. So does it include the season, all the seasons for the year? Uh, I've got the season pass, but not yeah. the, for the year because I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to play this throughout the year. Uh, but I got the Witch Queen for twenty one pound. Oh, okay. Well, of course it's PC, isn't it? Yeah. So you can get it a bit. I suppose it's cheap, isn't it? Well, isn't it about thirty five forty? Um. Yeah, and there is a all singing, all dancing version. So I've got the, I've got the whole thing again for the year. So what the seasons? Yeah, I, th- I think I uh, I think I got off for the basic Witch Queen. I think I got about forty seven percent off. Mm-hmm. So the new season is called Season of the Rising. Yeah, I had to start playing that because obviously you're building your character up to a certain level to play the next part. I ended up playing a lot at the beginning of the season just to build my character up so I can just go through without any hitch. And uh, yeah, you get you get if you've got the proper season or the singing or dancing, you get an exotic at the end of the end of it as well. Yeah, which is a I tell you what it is, it's a submachine gun. Which is pretty cool, actually. Um, obviously, we've got you can you can build weapons in this. You have parts to make weapons, and you can then add mods. So the days of playing a, a grinding for a certain role, these roles you'd be making yourself. Yeah, and the it's interesting because the uh, first person combat, mm. uh, the city on the is it glaive the call it or whatever it is the weapon you've got the enigma which is a glaive yeah yeah um you can very quickly do three hits and you can take down like a stronger enemy mm. with that it's quite effective yeah i've got mine i've got you can you level up this weapon as well yeah so i'm up to, I'm up to level 11 at the moment with mine and i've actually got a um I've got some mods added to it um yeah. i've still got loads to do with that because when i go to the world and i see where the enclave is, which is another part of it, where you can, I, I say, it's the old school style, you can like forge the weapon. Yeah. And uh, I really like it. I, I think I think they've done a grand job with this. And anybody that's maybe not been on Destiny for a while, you'd be surprised because all your weapons are going to be back at all at 13.50. So you won't be dragging <coughs> in. Yeah. And your characters will be pushed as well. I must admit, when I was playing it, the most challenging bit was when you're in a group and then you suddenly pick up an, uh, an end grab and you think, oh, that's a new headset. It's quickly finding a place that you can hide, put the headset on so you can carry on playing the game because you know that the next drop will be that much more powerful if you do that. Well, I think the the blue drops in this for this, this, um, this one, they uh, really sort of made you push it and push forward more. Yeah. To the to the first cap. I mean, my character at the minute, what is he now? Um, I have to put the right stuff on. i put that shotgun on. I'm about 15.31 at the moment. So I've been powering towards that. They did have the raid again. The raid was this weekend. Yes. Uh, I can't think who won it off the top of my head. But yeah, that was, that. I don't know how long that took. That was <clears throat> this weekend as well. I do like the idea, actually, of the weapons you get, which have, uh, the only way to explain it, they have a red box around them. And you've got an attunement process to do with them. Mm-hmm. So you have to uh, attach the weapon, use it, and go through the attunement process. And then you can then use deep sub resonance to um, break down what you want for that. And then you can either throw it away, or if it's a decent role, you can keep hold of it. But yeah, I, I, I've been enjoying it. I know some people say, so I would have now Destiny. But no, I think it's done a good job. 
the yeah. season of the rising isn't bad as well you can actually if you have if you have if you've got destiny and you want to just play it you can play the first part of the story for free i think you can do the first chapter just to give you a bit of an insight into it and see whether you feel like you want to pull the trigger on it as well yeah they've taken a lot out of the game as well <laughs> here we go moan, moan, moan. no they have they've taken a lot of the dlc that we've paid for out of the game yes because they are not going to keep leaving everything in at one point this the last one's still there i think which one they took out was it forsaken i think no. um yeah <clears throat> yeah you can still go to the frozen planet can't you yeah you can go to um you can still go to europa yeah yeah that's there so you've got so what you have there you've got the dreaming city is there you've got eternity which is to do with the 30th anniversary you've got nessus you've got You've got the Earth with the Cosmodrome EDC and you've got the Moon. And you'll have, when you get to it, you'd have Severthoon's Sarah, Throne World. But the Tangled Shore's not there, is it? No, that's not. But uh, they will bring, bring back bits and bobs as they go, I think. They, they'll, they'll do that. Well, they've brought back a bit of Mars, haven't they? Theoretically, because that's linked to Severthoon's Throne World. Yeah. So what that is called uh, the Enclave, which is the Mars part. Yeah. And then... you. I don't think you've seen it yet. So you've got you've got like a new open world map to do stuff. Um, I haven't. I, I've started to try the weekly missions. I haven't done the Wellspring yet because that needed a fix. And I haven't done the exotic. I've got an exotic quest to do as well. Yeah. Which I haven't touched yet. But yeah, no, I, it's it's great. I you have a little break from it. You come back to something like this. That's all you want to play. I know there's all these other games out, and you can only play one thing at a time. That is very true. That is very true. So, yeah, all good. Cool. Anything else you want to chat about before we move on? Uh, there was something, but I can't remember what it was now, so we'll just move on. <laughs> okay, so we'll, um, we'll switch to movies, TVs and streaming. In quest of a better life. Okay, do you want to talk about some news, and especially a game that you like? Uh, Film right, show, okay, a TV show. A TV show, yep, yeah, because... The great news is, is that the Orville New Horizons, there's a sneak peek of the show, is out now, and a full show is arriving on Hulu on the 2nd of June, 2022. We don't get Hulu, do we? No, we don't. Unless, of course, you use a VPN. I don't know. What's our, what's our um, comparison to that? I don't know. I wonder if it'll come up on Peacock or something or other like that. Possibly. Seems to be where stuff seems to go if it doesn't have a place somewhere else. I don't... Uh, has it? Been, who picked up the uh, the Orville in the UK? I can't remember. Was it? Wasn't Sci-Fi Channel? Was it? I don't remember. Or was it on Amazon Prime? I think I watched it. No, I, I bought it on Apple. That was right. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm not sure where that's going to find a natural home. We haven't got Paramount Plus yet on Sky. I've been still waiting for that announcement. No. Have you been watching any of uh, Discovery on Peacock? Is it on P? What Peacock on Sky? Uh, yeah. It's only on fixed time, so. Can't be doing with that. Can't be doing with that. I need to be able to see it there and just play it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I mean I'm, used, I'm, I'm old school. And you and me both have been there back in the day where we, you know, at the start of the VCR used to came in that there was something there you wanted to. Yeah. You have to watch it or, or not. But um, I think Peacock, you can actually probably still view them afterwards, can't you? Peacock? Um, I, I don't know. I can't remember for this one. <clears throat> because I haven't seen. Is it? No, it's not Peacock, is it? It's Pluto TV. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm too sure. Cock. Yeah, no, because yeah, you have. To, if, if it was on Peacock on Sky, you could record it. Yeah, no, it's not on there. No, I'll be waiting till Paramount Plus comes. I think. Hmm. Hopefully by then, because <laughs> I want it for Strange New Worlds more than anything, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully it'll come. So. Anything any other news, you know, in the background? Because we'll be missing, missing a couple of weeks. Uh, I know we had, it's been a great anniversary of The Godfather, so that's been coming out now on, um, <clears throat> in 4K. There's a few other bits and pieces that have been popping up. Yeah, there has. Uh, there was actually, um, I put on a bit of news, it was quite a, a, a tragedy. Do you remember um, On the Buses? Yes, because... Um, yeah, I've, I've forgotten she, the name. Um, Anna, Anna, yeah, uh, Anna Karen. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I, watched you, I think I put that on on the channel as well. Did I put it on there? A little, little, very tiny mini mini doc talking about on the buses and 
they were talking about Anna and that. Did you? Say uh, that? No, I didn't. I didn't see that on a, on the channel. It might have been on Twitter. You put it on, uh, yeah. but uh, I know I put something on uh, our Facebook group. But uh, evidently, she died in a fire. I can't exactly. think of uh, uh, fire and drowning are probably the two ways I think are the most horrific to go. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Such a shame. I mean, I didn't know this. So I was watching. I, I found it on YouTube as a little short doc chatting about on the bus. A lot of people might not know it because it's it's very early seventies when it came out. And apparently, on carry on, carry on camping. And do you remember the scene where Barbara, uh, Hattie said, Hattie Chay says. Now, come on, Barbara, let's, or is it not, not her, but um, what's his name says it? He's, uh, he's been the instructor in the, in the, in the car and they're doing the exercises. They come on, Barbara, let me see you swing those arms out. And her bra pops off, doesn't it? And she covers mm. herself up. But just behind her, one of the other girls is Anna Karen, believe it or not. I didn't know that. No, but so I haven't got that carry on on my box at the minute. There's a few carry ons on there because there's a few on Sky at the minute you can download. I did actually watch Carry On Sergeant the other night, mm. which is with William Hartnell, who obviously was the first Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a real tragedy. Again, you know, it's, it's, I mean, there are some people still around that from other stuff that you think, God, oh, they're still alive. You know, because I was I was reading up on the TV show Planet of the Apes, mm. and the two guys in that, they're both still alive and kicking. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, real real shame and. <clears throat> very much a, a show a, a great 70s show that um you know we we love there mm. uh that and, and many others that we've mentioned before in the past yeah well uh actually funnily enough i put the link in there now but on pluto tv right now is star trek discovery rosetta okay <laughs> so that's the uh latest episode of uh the new season four yeah and star trek discovery has been uh renewed for season five yeah, we'll have to just, I'll just want, just get Sky to get Paramount on this, on our box. That's all we want. Mm. Sooner rather than later. You want to get on the, on there, Pluto, because they've got Robocop the series on there after that. It's dreadful, isn't it? <laughs> I will, I will, I will say that if there's any sci fi buffs that really want to, want to see a good documentary, the, the In Search of Tomorrow documentaries that I did the Kickstarter with, yeah, um, they are still doing people to purchase it. And I think it's got a little bit more in March. So maybe a couple more days. The documentary is over four hours long. Mm. And I got my latest snooze on the Kickstarter post. And we will get our digital version before we get the um, the, the packages that we've we've gone for. Yeah. Um, like, so I went for the Admiral Kirk edition, which comes with a T-shirt, and bits and pieces, the Blu-ray and everything else. And you, obviously my name's in the credits again. Mm-hmm. Um I just I just love those sort of documentaries. I think the horror ones are great, but I can't wait for the sci-fi one. Um, they have really spoken to any, anybody and everybody from from every sort of sci-fi genre that was out in the eighties, whether it's Robocop, Star Trek, you know, um, was that was that Flight of the Navigator, for example, as well, and all sorts, all sorts of yeah, short stuff. circuit. Yeah, you know, everything is going to be documented in that series. In the documentary, it's already been premiered in the states at a theatre. Yeah, got a lot of praise for it. So uh, anyone that's interested in purchasing it, I think you still got a couple more days if you want to get a version of it. Mm. I would recommend it for you because you love your sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, I'll... <clears throat> yeah. I just yeah, we, I, I think I think we're being the original Kickstarter guys. We're going to get our discs a bit earlier, I think, apparently. So said, um, but people can still order it now at the moment and the trailer for it it looks amazing the Blade Runner stuff as well and um because we lost didn't we lose over the last couple of weeks who else did we lose in the world of cinema we lost um Douglas oh, Crumble yeah uh there was also um Sally Keller Kellerman as well who was uh, on MASH as Hot Lips but she was also on Star Trek and Where No Man Has Gone Before that's right yeah I remember I put the post on there yeah yeah um, yeah, real shame. Um, it's what it is. So, mm. All right, so let's move to cinema releases. I'll, um, I'll start with you. So on the 11th of March, we've got Red Rocket and Masari Chung. Chang, should I say? 18th of March, we've got X, the Nan movie. Oh, I know what that is, and that's dreadful. I'll say a minute. Wolf, Paris 13 District, and The Phantom of the Opera. The Nan movie. Well, Farid, Paris, uh, the Phantom of the Open. Oh, sorry. Maybe I might read The Phantom of the Open. The <laughs> Nan movie, right? 
I saw the trailer and I didn't even, I didn't I just saw it noticed it in my corner of my eye and I thought I'm not even gonna watch it. So right. do you remember Catherine Tate doing the nan? And it was funny yes. when she did it in the show. Yes. And she's always swearing and you know, she's that's what it's about. That's who it is. That the nan movie is her character. So you've got the guy from, from Gavin and Stacey in it as well. Mm. Who was a, a, a son, um, you know, relative. And but don't get me wrong, I remember where did I see it? I was watching um graham norton yeah and catherine tate was on there and i've never yeah. seen tom cruise laugh so much so catherine tate was there tom cruise was sitting on the bench as well and graham's talking about about this character saying that they went to cheer up some old ladies at this um this old people's home and that and this is where she got the idea for for the character right and she starts getting into that character and you see tom he's wetting himself absolutely crying <laughs> but she did play it well and i say for a, a character in a sketch show it was brilliant really good whether it needs to be a movie is another thing and i don't think it would do no it's like mrs brown boys never needed Ex- to be a movie exactly it, it didn't and actually that's now dying a death mind you to be fair that never needed to be a tv series <laughs> let alone a movie <laughs> <laughs> well there, you can you could flog in a dead horse i'm saying at the moment with that but um but no, yeah, but uh, I, I've got, a, yeah, I do like Catherine Tate and she's done some good stuff over the years, the years in the sketch shows. But yeah, uh, I would not recommend going. I mean, I, if it was on the telly, I'd maybe watch it just to see what it's about. Because I'm not paying for it when it's yeah. on my movies, but I certainly wouldn't go to the cinema to see it. It's a damn, some damn good movies out there, much more than that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a bit like uh, the Life on the Road with Ricky Gervais. I love Ricky Gervais, but I don't, that was a movie we didn't really need. <laughs> yeah, there are a few shows. Saying that back in the day, it's quite funny because you used to get the TV shows like on the buses. Um, yeah, then they uh, used to do a feature film, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And on the buses, that mutiny on the buses was one of them, which was I think that, I'm sure if that was the one that was set like a Pontins holiday camp. Yeah. Um, but they were funny, and they did what I think I think Love Thy Neighbor had a TV movie. Porridge certainly had a TV movie. I remember seeing that one, and I remember that very well. Um, and that they all worked for some reason. It was just like a longer version of the TV show. Mm. But a sketch character stretched into 90, 80, 90 minutes. Although saying that Adam Partridge was very funny, I think that was very good. What, well, Alpha Papa? Yeah, I did. I did like that. <laughs> yeah, but again, it was one that did, wasn't, we didn't, you know. I know, but do you know what? I It made me laugh. Yeah, and I love Alan Partridge to death. I I just can't get enough of him. And if he was in that sort of scenario with someone from Star Trek, then so be it with O'Brien. <laughs> but you know, yeah, it is, it is. It was. I did like that. I really did like that that one. That's that's one of the probably few that is 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 good. Anyway, do you want to go and go for the Blu-rays? Yep. So Blu-ray DVD releases. Uh, so we've got coming to America. Uh, Blu-ray DVD and uh, sorry two and then also coming to America one and two on Blu-ray DVD. Robocop the series from 1994 <laughs> is on DVD. Uh, an even worse series than that is Supergirl season six on Blu-ray <laughs> DVD or the complete seasons one to six of Blu-ray DVD if you want to actually wish that we would be annihilated by a nuclear attack. Uh, the Green Mile Ultimate Collector's Edition is on 4K Blu-ray. The Green Planet from David Attenborough is also on 4K Blu-ray. Then on the 14th of March, we've got an American Werewolf in London limited edition 4K Blu-ray. Mine's coming, edition. and Robocop is coming at the same time. That right. should still work. Okay. Yeah, and I will actually because I had actually saying that I had um, Phenomenon arrive the other day. Yeah. Uh, another Dario Argento movie, 4K, brilliant transfer. Again, a lovely set. Um, can't wait for those two to come out. So I think I think they're both on the roughly the same time. And um, Robocop as well. I can't remember. Mm. And I've got those penciled in with with Zavi, only because I wanted the steel book. And, and also that that's the arrow again arrows 4k edition of that right i have i have ordered a musical in 4k okay this will be interesting because i went to see a musical <laughs> Order, is it in the is it in there no it's not okay 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 no all i'm going to say is the musical i've ordered is possibly the best musical ever it has the songs. It has a good story. Oh. It's funny. So when are you getting the Rocky Horror Picture Show? 
No, it's not the Rocky Road, but it's older than that. So that's about as far back as I go for anything that's decent in... Uh... <laughs> Can I see? I've got the, the, the DVDs. Actually, anyway, it's Singing in the Rain. Oh, OK. And it is... As much as The Wizard of Oz is, is a piece of art in its own right, for, for what that is, Singing in the Rain is, is just miles above the rest. Um, it's got a, it's a It's a great story. Some people may just glance over it, if you know what I mean. You mm-hmm. could be one of those sort of people. But when you actually this, when you watch what the story's about and how clever it is, but it's uh, the idea of bringing talkies in for the first time. Uh, obviously, the jazz thing, I think, was the first talkie. But it's it's brilliant and it's so well done. Right. And, you know, you, I mean, you've got, um, oh, what's her name now? Um, uh, what's her name from Star Wars? Her mum's in it. Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher, yeah. She's in it as well, and she she's brilliant in it. Uh, she mm. looks lovely. She, at that when she was at age, she was she was she was gorgeous, and uh, with uh, Donald O'Connor and so um, you are talking Kelly. about Carrie Fisher's mum, aren't you? Because otherwise, I'm going to yeah. get that quite <laughs> quite anxious yeah. about this conversation, saying she looked lovely. Yeah, <laughs> because no, Carrie she Fisher was, would actually, be like a kid. Yeah, yeah, she did. She was um, she was brilliant. Right. Okay. Uh, it's, it's such a great. It's such a great movie. And... <laughs> Give me a give me a fright there. Thinking <laughs> <laughs> what I what you were admitting to on live on the podcast. <laughs> no, it's all right. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's my all-time favorite musical. Fair enough. I do own a couple of others. I, mean, I do have a copy of Grease. That's one of those that you have. But it's just one of those MGM musicals. Are just fantastic. That's not coming out for a while. And also, I've got The Great Escape coming as well. Right. Okay. In um, 4K. I am denied about it. I did look into it, and because <clears throat> there was a Criterion edition which was a 4K transfer, but not 4K, which is on American. But this is a this one here is a proper. So we'll see when that comes up. That will be coming in the post soon, I think. Actually, that one. So there's not much else coming out, is there? Looking at that list you got there, it's not a great deal. No, it's really quite poor at the moment. I've not sort of dropped on anything. I, I mean, I have. I've been buying loads of Blu-rays and. I thought particularly 4K Blu-rays recently. Yeah, but, actually, so. there's another good, Crystal Lake Memories is quite good, which is the history of Friday the Thirteenth. All right, okay. I did, uh, uh, I did pick up this one. Uh, blurred. Go back, go back, go back. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah the Eternals yeah. Uh, on um, Steelbook, which is nice. Not the most fantastic movie, but it's a very sort of bog standard, yeah. sort of like lower bog standard, <laughs> mm. uh, but not as bad as Thor: The Dark World movie no no it's funny um so the oscars are coming up soon aren't they yeah and you know they've actually taken out now they, they've got a list at a show live and they have ones they don't they've actually taken the soundtrack one off that live session as mm. well now which i thought great they're getting worse with that with what they drop out yeah so they're trying to make it shorter and shorter i don't know but um yeah that would be this i think that's i think it's march isn't it it comes at the oscars i think it's not far away something like that but I can see probably something like June picking something up, maybe. And it'd be nice to see No Time to Die to get something out of it, even though it's not there for, <clears throat> it'd be there for a technical achievement of some kind. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was a good movie. It was definitely the best of the Daniel Craig Bond movies. Mm. How it ended. Hmm. But, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, it'd be is. interesting to see what, what comes out on top there. And I think, I'm, I'm hoping probably June will pick quite a fair bit of it up. Yeah. But there are a few other bits and pieces that must stumble in its way. But um, all right. Anyway, so cinema charts, what we got? So at number five up from six, we've got No Time to Die. At number four, staying where it is, is Dune. At number three, down from two, is Encanto. At number two, down from one, is The House of Gucci. And at number one, up from three, is The King's Man. Mm, Blu-ray TV charts, still at five. We've got Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um Re-entry at four, we've got Doctor Who Collection Season 14, which I think is a Tom Baker years, maybe, as a guess. Uh, re-entry at three, we've got Captain America Winter Soldier. Um, we've got No Time to Die, up from four to two, and up from two to one, we have June. So Debbie Reynolds is, um, just sorry, something's just picking your head. Debbie Reynolds was, was Carrie Fisher's mum. Yeah. And also, we did lose someone else as well, didn't we, um, this week, or last week, from the Ghostbusters era. So the, direct, so the director of Afterlife. Oh, yes. Yeah, the director of Ghostbusters. Yeah, because um, his son directed Afterlife. <clears throat> yeah. But I think he, I still haven't seen it yet. But, um... <coughs> it's, to be fair, I think Afterlife isn't bad. It's mm. not It's not Ghostbusters as we know it, but it gets there. 
in the end mm. and there is some beautiful moments in that movie mm. yeah yeah <clears throat> but uh yeah okay so i haven't got a lot to talk about what we've been watching but i'm sure it's something you want to talk about now i can see so should we move straight into that yeah okay so should i do mine first then the one that we yeah both watched I, i'll then? just yeah, i'll just briefly talk about mine on the way out but yeah let's talk you can you can make this one thing you've watched i've actually seen some of it myself anyway so yeah okay so uh that is picard uh the new star trek uh, season two um of uh sir patrick stewart's uh incarnation of star trek shall we say um just as a first off i'm not presently planning on doing the deep dives because obviously that was Alan and myself uh, who uh, did that. I know Steve can't commit to doing the deep dives. Um, so not planning on doing it at the moment. That might change. If you want it, let us know. Uh, but anyway, so Picard's back. First show was on Friday. Uh, everything in this show feels like it's been turned up by quite a few degrees uh, from the previous season we've got the revamped score uh, to you know the starting the show right in the middle of the action and then going back to a uh, 48 hours earlier sort of bit um i i'm not gonna uh spoil but basically the per- basic premise of the show this is only what you're gonna learn in the first sort of like 15 minutes for most part uh is that the chancellor of uh starfleet is now uh captain picard or admiral picard and he's living back in his chateau. So even though we got the picture that he was off for a new space adventure in La Serena uh, at the end of the last uh, season, that's not how it worked out. You're not going to learn anything. You particularly. Do. I haven't seen the end of that, so I didn't want to know what that's about. If you're with me, don't yeah, tell me about last well, season. S- Steve, Steve, I think you kind of guessed that he's alive at the end of the show for the. Yeah, no, I get that. I okay. get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, it's it didn't end on a cliffhanger because otherwise everybody would have been going on about it. I can't even believe you haven't seen the end of season one yet. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but uh, Elnor is now a Starfleet cadet. Uh, Raffi has her own Starfleet vessel, which I think was actually the Enterprise, if I remember rightly. Rios is also a captain of a Starfleet vessel and not the La Serena anymore. He's actually in charge of the Stargazer. Steve's not listening at all because no, he I'm kicked up on the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm zonking out because you're talking about characters that I'm seeing the end of yet. Go carry on. All right, Seven uh, has La Serena now, and Agnes and Soji are touring the galaxy as ambassadors for AI life. <clears throat> uh, the show really performs a lot better than you know, uh, any of the shows in season one. There are a lot of Easter eggs, uh, like for example, there is. Mentions of obviously USS Excelsior, but also the Hikaru, the USS Hikaru Sulu. Uh, one of the things is it's really <coughs> nice to see the return of the Deltons to Star Trek. Uh, so this is the first time that we've seen these species on film since Star Trek The Motion Picture, where we had Ilea. Uh, although they have been, uh, they've been featured on the Star Trek Online game. There is some dialogue uh, which is clearly added to very speedily catch everybody up uh, on, you know, why things that seem to be set up at the end of the last season aren't in place in this season, particularly with Agnes, which was very sort of like ugly and dirty, but we won't go into that. Um, A deep cut into this, just because I know that some of our Star Trek fans really enjoy it when I pick up on these sort of things. Uh, a deep cut is that uh, Picard is clearly continuing his xenobiology st- xenology studies uh, as he has a broken tablet on his desk in his uh, chateau. And uh, that tablet is from Bajoran culture. And it is the one that was shatter- shattered by Benjamin Sisko in the episode of The Reckoning. Uh, this is the one where it released the Par Wraith and started the religious battle between the Prophets and the Par Wraiths again in Deep Space Nine. And given what happens in the episode and the eventual appearance of, spoiler alert, just close your ears for a second if you've not heard, but I'm sure that everybody knows that Q is on this show. Um, no spoil, you know, but it's not spoilers because it's already been announced and everybody knows and he's even pictured in the the poster for the show um but his announcement that the 
trial never ends. Uh, I'm sure that the placement of the par wraiths, or, or rather the uh, Bajoran tablet uh, of the stone um, is basically done there because I think it's linking in with what Q's here for. So that uh, that tablet was the tablet of reckoning. So I'm quite sure that this is a reckoning is a lot about what's a, what this is going to, this story is going to be about. Another part of the story is going to be about Picard being a very solitary figure and why that is and stuff like that as well. Uh, there's been so many bits of deep lore in this. I could just wax lyrical for absolute ever uh, on it. Uh, I've put some pretty wild ideas about where this show will go uh, already. I'd love to share them with you, but I know that I don't want to spoil it for Steve. Um, and so, yeah, so that's really where we are, I think. So let us know if you do want a, a week by week analysis of these of this show, because I might consider doing it one on my own if necessary. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are at the moment. And I'm back in the room. <laughs> <coughs> How many episodes were in the first show, by the way? Do you remember? Ten, I think. Should be okay. Well, it's not like it's ten hours, is it? It's just ten short shows or forty-five yeah. minute shows. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. To yeah, I'd be uh, looking forward just to see it, just because of who else is in it, really, and um, it should be interesting to see how that pans out. I mean, you know that Q's in it because it's on the poster. No, but, but I do that before then when it was announced yeah, he was going to be in it. So yeah, it was it was pretty obvious from when they showed that card and it was the Queen with a Q who was going to be in it. But how they make him appear old is fantastic. Mm. I just love his wit. He has, I mean, the script writers that gave him that sort of wit that he uses, and yeah. he does bounce off that himself with how he works it. And uh, <clears throat> John Delance is very good, I must admit. Yeah, I mean, John Delance is absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you've ever heard the audio books of Spock versus Q. No, I don't think I've heard those ones. Uh, definitely worth a listen to because it's a debate between Ned and Nimoy as Spock and John Delancey as Q, mm. uh, but as in character. Yeah, yeah, because we. Isn't it amazing that I can't believe it, I, was, I didn't realise it until it popped to my timeline. But it's been it, it just it was a few days ago now. But we lost Leonard Nimoy seven years ago. Where's that time gone? It's just it's unbelievable. But how long is it since we lost uh, Scotty? Yeah, well, I, James I, Dewan. I, I can't even guess what it is now. No. And then you think you know other people lost like Freddie Mercury. It's three decades. Yeah. Frightening. I know, but. but yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it's it's hard to believe that I've actually been alive longer with Freddie Mercury not being alive than I have with him being alive and playing music. Mm. Um, or even just being alive at the same time as him. <clears throat> but it's, yeah, I mean, time really marches on. But th- this, is de- this is definitely better on, as a first episode than the last, well, any of the last ep- season episodes, to be fair. Mm. Uh, not that there was anything that... I quite enjoyed Picard. I loved the fact that me and Alan and hello to Alan if you're there. We you know we've seen that you've uh, sent us uh, a hello. Um, hope you're feeling well. Mm, um, the the I loved doing that show with Alan because I think you know I think other people liked it as well. But it kind of made the first season of Picard quite special uh, because we were talking about all these theories and all of these deep cuts in law and stuff like that. It was great. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we move on because uh, were we not going to talk about the other show? Oh yes, yeah, you did, did. Don't worry about what I got down there, but yeah, talk about um, yeah that one there, which I my missus is already caning it at the moment. I haven't okay. Even, I just jumped in a bit, so yeah. Uh, well, I, I caned this on Oculus. <laughs> this is a show I was watching, <laughs> and that is Inventing Anna. So this is uh, based on the true story. Uh, of reporter Vivian Kent, who defies her editor to pursue the story about Anna uh, Delvey, an alleged German heiress indicted for grand larceny and jailed without bail. Uh, like I said, it's based on a st- true story, as it says on every beginning of every episode, except the bits that are made up. And it's uh, really interesting uh, looking at how uh, this 24-year-old woman <laughs> um, sort of got herself embroiled in the centre of New York sort of upper, <coughs> excuse me, upper culture and, you know, uh, society sort of class 
groups um, and basically conned people from, you know, by all accounts. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there's some really good notable names in there. Um, Anna uh, Chalumsky from My Girl 1 and 2 back in 91 and 94 and uh, Julia Garner from the Ozak who she... plays Anna herself. Oh, is it? Yeah. I thought, who plays a reporter? Because she looks familiar. Anna Klumsky. Oh, okay. I thought, I'm not sure, I'm not sure Julie Garner was actually, you know, I say I've been, my missus is, is caning it as we speak, it's on at the moment, I just sat and watched part of episode three with it. Yeah, it's it's the most unusually timed thing as I've ever come across, because <clears throat> episodes range from between 59 and 82 minutes, there's yeah. no two episodes that are the when, same length. When she first mentioned it to me, she's talking about the, the, the premise of the show. Yeah, it was real. She, she really was yeah, jailed. Yeah, I I was thinking, I said, you know, are you sure you're not about a movie that with Tom Hanks, are you? Because I was thinking of the um the one, the Tom Hanks Spielberg movie where the guy was impersonating pilots. Catch me sorts. if you can. Yeah, which is a fantastic movie. That's a really yeah. good film. And I thought, I said, you sure you're not about this? Because, you know, the way she came across it originally, I, until I looked into it and saw what it was on about. But um, No, and evidently she served her four years got released, started doing it all again, and he's now back in jail. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry. She's back is that a spoiler then at the moment? Is ex- it because she exceeded her uh, her visa? That was it. So she's going through extradition. Because <laughs> a bit, I just, before we started here, I was eating my KFC and uh, I was just watching it. She had it on in, in the set with her. Mrs. Yeah. And uh, she was running up this credit card bill like you wouldn't believe to, to a member of the family or something or whoever it was. No, it was a friend, wasn't it? Was it, it? Was it a friend with the with the with the uh, American Express card? Yeah, it My was. God, it was a, she the American, had kittens. It was the American Express card of her friend's yeah. business. <clears throat> Ironically, though, this is something you might, you might, might not know. The person that created the show, yeah, um, she created the hospital drama. Why is my brain? I'm, I'm, I'm getting. I'm, I must be a dementia coming in a minute. Yeah. No, it's not. It's um, Grey's Anatomy. Oh, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. Shona Rhines, because uh, when I, I she mentioned it to me the other day, and I just saw her, her name pop up on the screen when we sat down earlier before we came into the show. Yeah, I've um, not yeah. watched uh, not watched that. No, but she's done a. There's a few shows that link together for Grey's, and there's a fire fighting show as well, which links to the same district. Yeah. But um, but yeah, th- this is uh, her her doing. But yeah, what I've seen of it's quite interesting, and um, I'll probably drop in and out with it as it's on. But yeah, course, tell me more. If if you're on the one with the credit card, I think there's about two or three episodes left. Well, she'd have them really. done tonight. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she will because the last one's eight to two minutes. Is it? And the one before that's about seventy five. Mm. So she she so, might have got through so this, the other two. This, the one the one we was watching was one where she said I got delivered this box. And it was a peacock. Oh no, that was earlier. Was it? Yeah, that was about three or four. Because the report was talking to a guy in a art museum, and she's sat next to him, and he's, she's trying to get some information out of him, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't cut it. He, he did a runner. Yeah, no, that, that's the uh, solicitor that she tries to, uh, or that she tries to get to uh, sort out all of her bank loans, isn't it? That one. Well, it was a bald guy mm. with glasses. Yeah, it. yeah. Mm. yeah. It's it's a really. Uh, I, I looked at it and I thought, don't think I'm really going to enjoy this, but I don't know what else to watch. So I put that mm. on, and I, I just ended up caning it over three or four nights yeah. it took it took longer because the episodes are so long you know being <clears> over <throat> an hour each uh, so it's like watching a movie a night basically yeah. to watch two of them together yeah sure uh, but like I said I just stuck on the oculus and laid on the sofa and watched it while she was watching the other stuff mm. no um, I did watch I did watch a film last night it's a, quite an old one but I, I don't know why I saw it on Netflix I thought Miss has not seen it, but actually she had. But do you know what? It's not like her to watch a film second time. But we actually sat and watched it, and that was Alive. All right, yeah. Which is about the um, I think there were are they I think there was South African rugby team. I can't remember the true story of them crashing in the Andes and having to um, go to the point of that they have to start eating the the dead to yeah. stay alive. And they they were in the Andes I think for every year something like that. Right. Um, terrific story. Very well put together. Um, really, if you've not seen it live, it is on Netflix. And uh, was that the one where they turned to cannibalism? Yeah, so they, they yeah. started eating. The, yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah, because they were they were in the ice. <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah, very interesting to see how you'd have to play that if you're in that position. But it's a, it is a true story, and um, yeah, well, very well done. 
worth worth a watch, I'd say. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyway, should we? Um, we'll we'll move on then quickly to uh, the listeners' questions. Yeah. John, what's happening to us? Okay, so Mark's got two for us as usual. Thanks, that Mark. So his first one: Do you do anything in particular to prepare for a big game release? Such as. Well, some games you might actually, in, in case of Destiny, some people used to think, well, I'm going to stop grinding and having some stuff in the barrel ready to fire on the day of the game to see uh, what I'm at my yeah, level. But, yeah, but you, yeah. Do that doesn't do work that, these days. Steve. They don't, that doesn't work anymore. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you do that, Steve. I don't do that. I've never done that. <laughs> but but there's really, I suppose, do you, do you switch off from a game that's very similar to um, get burnout or do you start watching the reviews? Or do you stay completely away from it to just experience it for the first time without knowing anything? I prefer to sort of go into it a bit blind. Mm-hmm. And then after I've played it for several hours, presuming it's like a 30, 40 hour game <clears> thing, <throat> I'll watch the, what other people have thought of it. And if there's anybody saying, oh, this is a great build to do early on in the game and see whether or not it's worth, you know, mm. or see see what how... Maybe on a skill tree, I've gone maybe in a different direction to see what it can give. I'll do yeah. that, but that's more post rather than pre. Mm. Um, I have many, many, many years ago taken days off <laughs> to play a game on day of release. Haven't we all? Yes. Well, haven't we together at one point? <laughs> and how, how about what well, I, I, I used to go, I remember Halo 2 coming out. And I went to my local Blockbuster store at the time and stood in line for midnight opening to pick the game up and then take it home and play it. I've never been that desperate. And I did that with a GTA as well, if I remember rightly. Yeah, no, I've not done that. Yeah. No, I'm surprised. No, no, but I've, <coughs> um, I've pre-installed games mm. um, and been on at midnight when PlayStation has unlocked them or whatever, but I've not. And I'm going back a few years now. Yeah. Yeah. So the days of Halo 2 was some time ago. So that was like, you know, you can't purchase it to play it. Yeah. No, I've not done that sort of stuff. Mm. Do you want to start with the second question? That's interesting. (laughs) Okay. So with both Sony and Microsoft buying up developers and publishers, how do you, uh, how do you you think the future, what do you think is the future for Nintendo? Don't say kids games, Steve. (laughs) (laughs) He's waving his hands at the moment as if, me, me, me. Yeah, you, Steve. <laughs> the future for Nintendo is the, the, the future. Nintendo got their own future in their own pocket, man. It's I, up to I, them. Yeah, I don't think Nintendo compete. I think that the, the only thing Nintendo <clears throat> compete They sit in the corner, themselves. do what's right, and they get they get the people purchasing what they want to purchase, and they're happy to do it, and that's how it has always been. It's never changed. Nintendo, for want of a better description, are the Sweden of the video game industry because they'll just sit there and they'll let everybody else battle out and they'll just sit and do their thing. Well, they will because they've had some, in it, in it, some you know, things that come out that's been quite, in, it, in it, and, you know, with the, the Wii and <clears throat> all sorts of ideas that they, they brought to the table and they are still the best-selling um, handheld, always have been. And they're also very catch cash rich company mm. to the extent of if they really wanted to go in competition with microsoft and uh sony i think that they could probably wipe the floor with them um in the long run because they would have more cash to throw about maybe not against microsoft as much but certainly against sony but they're not they're not in the same space they have their brand they have their thing Mm. And I think that they're happy to develop that and push the boundaries where they want to. You know, they've done that uh, cardboard stuff that integrates with the controller and stuff like that as well. They they like oh, doing yeah, weird, that. innovative sort of stuff. One of the things I've been thinking about getting for my son, because <coughs> he loves, uh, you know, he loves his Nintendo, even though he's 14, 15, <coughs> uh, is... They now have a, a version of Mario Kart where you get a remote control Mario Kart with a camera on, and mm-hmm. you can actually make a track in your own house that you can then drive around. And then it, you know, you you drive the track yourself, mm. and then it puts the uh, 
uh, other characters in and he can race around that track and the remote control car goes round at the same time. Oh, OK, OK. <clears throat> they do come up in weird and wacky ways. Yeah, but I mean, that's quite, quite interesting, quite innovative. I'm trying to persuade my wife that, you know, because I know my son wants, wants it because he thinks it looks really cool. Um, and I'm trying to persuade my wife that, yeah, I think we should get him it because it'll be really cool because I want to play with it as well. <laughs> Okay, yeah. No, they they do their own thing. Yeah, they always do. And they a lot of people love it, so why not carry them the way they are? They don't need to be bought out. No. There was rumours that Microsoft may be trying to buy them, but... No, Microsoft they, would they, never be able to afford them. I don't think they need to be bought anyway. No. You know, they, they're, they're as much their own thing as Sony and Microsoft are, and Nintendo wanted to buy someone, a developer, then they would do so from that point of view, so... Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that they're the Rolex of video games because they're not, but it's kind of like a bit like Casio trying to buy out Rolex. It's just not going to happen, mm. you know. And Microsoft buying out Nintendo, they're not going to, they're not going to buy. Nintendo earn more than enough money yeah. to keep their mm. partners happy, their shareholders. Mm. Yeah, especially I, now with the Switch. Yeah, no, that's that's going. They seem to sell them like hotcakes still. I think nearly every man and his dog has got one except for me. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Well, I have one. I know you do. In a, in a matter of fact, I forgot to mention, I played Metroid Prime or Metroid Dread. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, uh, and I also put that on uh, the Pop Culture Gamer YouTube channel. There you go. Just, just as a thought, I never mentioned this, but uh, I've now colour-coded all of our videos. So if it's a Nintendo... The banner at the bottom, which tells you about what it is, is in red. If it's Xbox, it's green. If it's Sony, it's blue. And if it's PC, it's yellow. There you go. Something you've learned today. Yeah. <laughs> Steve seems so impressed. I am. I am. I'm over the moon. OK. <laughs> Paul Wilson, his question from Facebook is, will video game gaming ever go the way of the dinosaur? Or is it just ingrained into society? even more like alongside the idea of reading, movies, music and TV. It's here to stay. And, yeah, until we realise that we're actually living in a simulation and that this is the game. Mm. Yes, Aiden, yes. <laughs> okay, yes, okay. For you, yes. Simultation or simulcra. I mean, it's surprising really now where if you'd have gone back a long time ago, gaming was a boys thing and it was always has been then. But it seems surprising now how it's gone the other way, where you're getting granddads, nans, play gaming. Yeah, every, but... it's, 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 it was back in the 70s. It was just a thing that kids, you know, boys used to do and people would think, no, do I, do I get involved in it? Do you see what I'm saying by that? And that's not yeah, being, I, I, I do. I'm not I do. being detrimental to any sexist or anything like that. No, it was earlier on, it was predominantly a male orientated sort of thing. The but reason cool. why granddads are getting like that is because those boys from the 70s are now granddads. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not. No, no, I'm not a granddad yet. <laughs> no, you're not. No. But, yeah, let's, you know, if if uh, if I'd have had, well, if I'd have had my son uh, even five or ten years earlier, he could potentially <laughs> be father himself now. Mm. And then I would be a granddad at 50. I mean, gaming does have a big, a big... Um... There is a large scale from from young to old age that plays now, the where it wasn't so much like that before. Mm. And you get more and more different type types of people now actually joining in with it. But I think also you get I think the games that are attractive to the teens to the early twenties are very different games to the oh, yeah. games. You see, my daughter I mean my daughters age. would have never played gaming when they were very, very young. Um but I think it's only because my youngest picked because with the, living with a load of boys that she, that, that she, you know, she got involved with it. And my oldest daughter as well. I mean, she's got her own place now and they've got an Xbox sitting at home at the moment, mm. which, you know, which I don't think would have been their thing, to be honest. Even though she used to, I know my oldest used to like playing the old Sing Star stuff and all that. Yeah. Um, but no, I think there's the, the, the range for people playing games has now, it's gone bang it's huge it's every every culture it's really every man his dog if it's the right term or phrase to use do you know what i mean oh yeah i mean you know i used to think <clears throat> probably up until about four or five years ago i was a bit of a freak being you know a late 40 year old mm. playing video games and 
it was when I was talking to a guy who was a very, very senior police officer, sort of like superintendent level, mm. who turned around to me and you know, uh, said, oh, well, you know, I do a podcast. He said, what do you do it on? And I said, oh, video games and movies, tech. And he was like, oh, great, I'll listen because, you know, I like a bit of Call of Duty. And I was sort of like... You can okay. take a bit. <laughs> You know, it's 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 not me. It, you know, mm. it really is. It's 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 not just something that I have held on to since being a kid. It is something more in common with our because he's he was slightly older than me, more you know, more closer to your age. I would have said. Mm. He's, okay. he, he's well, there's a five year, six year age gap between us, isn't there? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so you know, and, and that's all I mean by that. I don't mean any. No, 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 no. Uh, but. You know, I I was sort of like thinking that you know, because you you do as if you're isolated as a video gamer in your circle of friends because none of my friends play video games. My brother-in-law does. Mm. I don't play video games with him because he plays Fortnite. And to me, you know, as a 54-year-old guy, he's probably a little bit old to be playing Fortnite. But there you go. Um, that's to me is more of a teen, 20-year-old game. Mm. Um, but. I, I don't know. I, I've always sort of like felt maybe there's just something a little bit odd about me, but it's not. It's just. Well, you remember back in the day, I mean, where were I? Just an example. I remember watching, you know, certain films I'm watching in the school, in the school playground, you'd have there'd be little two specky kids in the corner who were into computers and playing video games. And everyone else was used to playing football. And they all think they're sort of completely different over there. Do you know what I mean? It was. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and they would be be they'd be like a be a, a geeky chess club to play play chess or something. And it's as 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 a lifelong geek, I can say. Do you see what I'm saying by that? You come across that. Yeah, but I, I would say as as a lifelong geek, I can, in all honesty, st- say it annoys the hell out of me mm. that the jocks from school have now invaded my culture. Yeah. <laughs> You're not welcome here. Go yeah. back and look at. You football. bullied me at school when I was yeah. when I was seven. All right, because I <laughs> like to do this, and you were yeah, just playing football. <laughs> I suppose that the advantage is is that now I have the upper hand because this is my world and you're a guest. Yeah. <laughs> but it's as it, much, it, and I say sometimes it, it grows as, as much as movies does. So. Well, most of the, the video yeah. game industry is worth more than the movie industry now. Yeah, and it, it uses all of the same technologies. Yeah, it uses all it, the same actors. Yeah, all the sort of mocapping they do and stuff like that, and everything else. Voiceovers, you a lot. Yeah, the whole stage of getting a game from script to yeah, music disc. stars. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's here to stay. You know, who'd who'd have thought going back to the Commodore sixty four Spectrum's Atari ST sort of era, mm. we would have records. In the 21st century, of video game soundtracks. Yeah. Let alone ones that cost over a hundred quid, like the Final Fantasy one. Yeah. As it yeah. is now. Is it really good? Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, I take it that's going to be sold, Charlie. <laughs> no, no, I love it. But, um, no, it's it is. It, it's definitely. Yeah. Anyway, should we um swiftly move on? It's getting to. The... Okay, so Jason Toon gatekeeping. This is going to be an interesting debate. Uh, should everything we enjoy be accessible and have representation for everyone else, or does gatekeeping protect what we enjoy from being ruined? Take the new Rings of Power series as an example. Fans of Lord of the Rings are upset about how they are making drastic changes to the law in order to make it inclusive and have diversity. Or Souls-like games, where some people uh, want an easy mode, but doesn't that undermine what the franchise is about? Go on, Steve. I'm going to let you go first on this one. I can see both sides of the coin for that. Yeah. But I don't agree. I, I agree about, say, some people saying if you want an easier mode in soul in a Souls game, why not? It's like Cuphead. You know, people have asked for an easy mode in that because it was so damn hard. But when you're talking about books like Lord of the Rings, that seems a bit disrespectful from my point of view. It's like breaking. It's like you're, break, you're breaking... I suppose it's all about law and something else. It doesn't matter what it is, but yeah, I, I I don't blame them kicking off for that. I mean, what about the right? You know, the writer of the books. What he was his thoughts on that? You know, yeah, he's probably. I don't think he's getting involved in the series, and I don't know. Well, I mean, there's lots of examples, isn't there, in terms of where they've changed law. The the travesty of you know the the 
timeless child in Doctor Who, for example. I'm not even a big Doctor Who fan, and I'm completely insulted by what happened to the law because of that one episode. Mm. Um, and I, like I said, I, Doctor Who is not something I'm normally passionate about, but I passionately disagree with what they did with that episode and rewrote 50 years of history. And even Star Trek had a, had a bit of a painful um, twist. And well, whether, whether or not people are happy that or not, it's the <coughs> sides of the coin there. Well, the example, one example I can think of that, we remember that Star Trek's always strove to be as inclusive as possible, uh, is the whole Hikaru Sulu is married to another man sort of mm. thing in Star Trek Beyond. And even George Takai disagreed with it mm. um, because it rewrote the law, even though he is gay and he is married to another man, but he came out and said he didn't agree with them changing the character. I mean, you could you could debate this for days and also you could say the wrong things and upset someone, but is it just the way of the world now? I think it is just the way of the world. I mean... You know, you look at. I could say a few things, but I don't want to be disrespectful to people. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not being. Not none of this is meant to be disrespectful at all. But just as just as an example, the episode of Deep Space Nine, where you know where they went in, where it was like a vision, and they all went into like a 1950s press or 1920s press sort of thing. Mm. Uh, Judy, you know, Doctor Bashir. I'm not sure what sort of like national what what his ethnic origin is. Egyptian, is it? Something like that. I'm not sure, mm. but he would have been classified as a second class citizen there. But he was portrayed as like a middle class white man. That that just not, that just wouldn't have happened in that era in mm. real life. And the thing is, the world has changed. And you know, you look at like Flash Gordon getting the things of you know this contains outdated ideas because a guy's called me and he's not even Chinese <laughs> you know it's not well, actually, like I when I I watched um say I watched Carry On Sergeant last and I, yeah. I actually I, I think I watched a couple last night because they're very short they're not very long and when you look on actually I'm gonna just gonna go to my my sky on my phone now because let me just have a look because I've got them recorded I'll go to my recordings and which one did I go to? Let me go to Carry On Sergeant. Let's have a look. So I'll give you what it, I'll tell you what it says here. So Sergeant Grimshaw leads his last platoon before, retire, before retire, retirement. This film has outdated attitude, language and culture depictions, which may cause offence today. Sorry, I can't think of anything that would upset anyone in Carry On Sergeant. I'm sorry. I, I, sorry, I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? Apart from Mary Whitehouse, because it shows her. Very quick clip of some boobs or something or other. No, like but that. there isn't. There isn't anything like that. This was the very first Carry On movie uh, with Bob Monkhouse in it. Um, oh, it's uh, not the one where they've got the two sort of prefab. Oh, it's a police one, isn't it? It's. I was thinking of. No, 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 no. This is black and white. This is the. Yeah. William William Hartnell's the sergeant. Yeah. No, I was thinking of a later one where it was the it was the they were in the military and the the. Do you Carry, remember the... There was one called Carry On England. They had the women in, in one hat. And yes, the... that's that's the one I was thinking of, and that was the one where they were doing a bit of flashing of skin. But I mean, no. you know, it was that was just. But this, the, yeah, this has even got Shirley Eaton in it, and she's great. Remember, she was um, painted in Goldfinger. Yes, she and was. She, bo- she died she was, recently she, as well, didn't she? She did, yeah. And and in Karen Sargent, because um, it's the very beginning of the episode, very beginning of the film, you see Bob Monkhouse at his wedding. And um, Shirley and his wife, and he's re- they're reading the, um, the the bits of paper from reports of get wells and happy happy getting married. And then one they say, "Hey mate, you've just been called up." And yeah. um, Bob Monk is on, uh, Bob Monk gets on the train, and his wife goes and get, get breaks in there as such, and works in the canteen to see his to her husband. Yeah, but yeah, no, it, the world has changed and. The world yeah. has changed, and I think it's a good thing that the world has changed and that there is representation because people can then relate more to characters and stuff like that. But unless it is deliberately offensive uh, or is offensive to groups, I don't think that stuff should be renewed. I don't agree with the concept of a female, in inverted commas, James Bond, because James Bond is a white Scottish male. Full stop. That's the way he's wrote. That's 
how he's described in the books, that's the law. That's not to say you can't have another 007 like in No Time to Die, where it is a black female 007 character, but with just a different name. Mm. Or you can't have, a you know, anybody in a 007 role because 007 is a designation. James Bond is a character. It's like you wouldn't have uh, John Cleese as the queen so why would you have a female as a male character? It, mm. But then again, you look at, you know, on that for, for me, because James Bond is an iconic character, it just shouldn't be done. But you could, mm. but you could kill off the but character then, of James the Lord, Bond and go on. Yeah, but Lord of the Rings as well, they, you know, they're, they're trying to, it's another take on Lord of the Rings, I suppose, this Amazon series, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'm not familiar with what the changes are that people are getting upset about. Mm. But from a, from a gaming point of view, switching back to that, I mean, people just don't like, you know, old games were hard games back in the day. We all played them. Yeah. And to say have an easy mode, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the game at your pace. There's nothing wrong with that. No, all. I mean, if if it's got a good start, if you want to get through the story, it's, it's like uh, Horizon Forbidden West has a normal mode, a hard mode, or a story mode. Mm. And the story mode, the combat is a little bit easier because it's there for you to get through the story, not through the uh, the combat. If you want the t- tougher difficulty, you can go for it. But it is kind of, at the same time, the point with, um, you know, uh, Elden Ring and all of that is that they are harder games because... It's for people who were sadomasochists, mm. basically, in a gaming sense, because they like that extraordinary level of challenge. That, as I've said before, that's not why I play a game. I play a game for enjoyment, not because you know, I don't, not for achievement per se. <laughs> Ironic me saying that, isn't it? Not for the achievement of completing the game per se, but the <clears throat> enjoyment of the game. Which is a mm. different, slightly for me, a slightly different thing. It's it's yeah, you could be your hours and that, but it's, 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 the world's changed. TV, movies, gaming, everything is all different to how we see it. Um, I know it's difficult. For some, well, not difficult for someone our age to think why's and what's for it, but uh, I do get. I do. I don't understand where there's ways of either cutting something or changing it because of it's going to upset. One person out of a thousand. So quickly, Scott Kidd. Scott Kidd. With, Ra- with Wrath coming to WoW Classic, what game or expansion for you for a game would you have liked to play again, all you know, played again all over? Um, <clears throat> something that you can't you can't play today. Uh, all of the content that Destiny has taken off me, please. <laughs> you finished it all? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, but I want to play it again. <sighs> After all, I've already played it about four hundred times, and that's just for you. <laughs> And uh, you're coming away from this anyway. You're not. You, you're not. You, you've not even purchased the whole season. So you know, season I have per- well. I've got the whole season. I've just not purchased the year seasons. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah, I've got this season. Yeah, I just, I just didn't see the point in spending all of that money because it was a lot more money to buy the whole year when it was actually worked out to be cheaper because of the deal I got on uh, what mm. you call it that it was actually cheaper to just buy each season as it comes because it's only a thousand silver. Mm. If you do play it, you might not. Yeah, because if I don't, then I've saved that money as well. <clears throat> hmm. That eight forty nine. So, any expansion would you like to play again of any kind? Or yes, the content that Destiny's taking. I wasn't being serious there. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know why you thought I was joking. Just to wind you up. Not, not, really, not really joking, but yeah, there are there are rhymes and reasons for you know, but. I, I understand that, but equally, it's something that we've paid for that they've taken off us. I think we'll leave it there, shall we? Well, you haven't answered your part of it. Question. I can't think of it, to be honest. Um, most things I can replay anyway, so it's stuff like some expansion. Well, they get extra games, don't they, really? But um, expand, any, any sort of expansion game I've ever played will be this, really, because before, it, I, if it's like Fallout, I've got all the expansion anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter which Fallout game it is, I've all got, you know, each of the go. DL, the DL, we'll call it DLC in this point of view. <clears throat> I can still go and play today. I suppose one that was for you would have been Bioshock. Well, I can for, still play them. No, but for Infinite, because you couldn't, now you can, but there was a point where you couldn't play it, wasn't there? 
Oh, what, the DLC? Yeah. So they got bummed over? Yeah. Yeah, that was to do with the last game, wasn't it, I think? I can't remember now. Might have been. But, uh, but yeah, still a good... Yeah, very very cleverly done that. If you've not played it, you probably haven't, have you? I have. But you did? Oh, okay. I wouldn't spoil it for anyone that hasn't, though, because it's very clever how it all, how it ends up and finishes. Yes, and who you are. Yeah, yeah. It's my mind-blowing, I think, so I think on that one. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Anyway, I think we have to call it a night. I think we're there, didn't you? I think so. Okay, so signing off, Twitter at Steve07, PSN ID is the real Steve07, Xbox 07, and YouTube channel The Vinyl Cues. I'm nearly at 300 now. It's creeping up a bit more again. Yeah, well slowly, done. slowly but surely. Um, Hayden, do you want to blast out everything that is you? Yeah, sure. So it's HERJ on uh, JUK on everything. Uh, that's Twitter, PSN, Xbox Live, Steam. You name it, apart from Epic, which it's Pop Culture Gamers. And then if you want to follow the show, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Pop Culture Gamers to see all of the videos. Like I said, there's been a load of videos added this week. Uh, our Twitter is Pop Culture Gamer. There's our Facebook group. There's our Facebook page. You can also email podcast at popculturegamers.co.uk and our website anchor.fm forward slash Pop Culture Gamers. All in one breath. Yeah. So just last thing to say, it's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night, guys. Good night.